<coughs> Chief Sawyer, could you uh, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge of allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Tonight, public hearing, uh, public comment is first, but before we do that, we are going to have, we have to have public hearings. Uh -huh. So the first one is RSA 419A, established fees. <clears throat> Notice is hereby given that the Hampton of Selectman will hold a public hearing on January 14th at Selectman Trum at 7 p.m. to increase fees, uh, cr increase transfer station disposal fees on the following set of items. And then there's an attached sheet. So, sir, sure. uh, I, I hope everybody's reviewed them, or I'll be happy to read them if you want. Uh, the, the we did post notice, and we did post the fees. Uh, if the board has any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Uh, public works could not be here tonight, um, but we can proceed. The fees deal with uh, plaster from demolition. Um, increase there. Refrigerators, rocks, sand, sheetrock, televisions, uh, tires, commercial trash, household trash, and wood, including uh, including demolition material. Any questions from the board? I have a question. Yep. There was a notice that Public Works put out, I think, last week, saying that wood collection was going to be postponed but then hopefully opened up again on January 11th but I guess it never did and so now we're going to start charging a fee for it so I don't quite understand we do charge a fee all the time all right well how come is it are we going to be able to pick the wood up now or well large material we can't take right now because we don't have a trailer to put it in uh. we're waiting for it to be delivered uh, small material uh, can go into the regular transfer trailers okay. so there's a, you know, there is a charge for all of that, and there, there has consistently been a charge for demolition material. So it said construction. That's demolition. Yeah, so that, And that was that's what we, we voted taken. on last week, correct? That's correct. So, those, so that week coming that up. trailer will be ri arriving shortly, and we'll have it there, and we'll, get, we'll just go through the normal operation for that. Okay, so actually this is a public hearing, so she asked the public first, right? There's any? Yes, sir. So is there anybody from the public who would like to speak on the public hearing? Okay, sorry about that. Seeing that from the back of the board. <laughs> Anybody else? Jim? Rick? Mary Louise? No. Nope. Nope. So, close this one out, or do you want to have a vote on it? Uh, you need to have a vote to enforce All it, right. sir. So, I need I'll a, a motion. motion that we accept second. it. Second. I'll second. Rick already did. Oh, okay. <laughs> All those in favor? Opposed? Abstain? Abstain. Four, zero, one. The next one is a R, uh, public hearing for RSA 4114, a first hearing on 36 Huckleberry Lane, map 5, 115, lot 34, gifting the land of the town at 36 Huckleberry Lane, um, and, the, go ahead. and the acceptance of a right of access for vegetation restricted areas. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is uh, a follow-up to the approval of a two-lot subdivision. Uh, have a parcel at this address. Uh, one of the lots actually had cut through it a uh, piece of uh, traveled way for Huckleberry Lane that had been laid out uh, in a different location, but it was built over this lot. And so as part of this subdivision, the, uh, there would be a deeding to the town of a portion of this land and uh, eventually we would be having the board uh, engage in a layout proceeding to lay out the road over the gifted portion of land where it actually is now. Uh, there is also uh, a vegetation restriction area so that there will be a good sight line across that portion and the purpose of the right of access uh, in case there is a failure to keep the uh, vegetation down would be to enable um, our uh, public works to go on the property to to keep it down so that there will not be a safety issue. Okay. So anybody from the public would like to speak on this public hearing? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board. Is there any questions? This is the first of 
two hearings? Or two hearings, yes, sir. Mary Louise? Another mess for the town. The paperwork we were given has the uh, description here of the parcel. Um, that whole area is wet. I'm sick and tired of us uh, intruding in the wetlands. I'm, I don't have a problem accepting this, but this is a case here, uh, once again, where I think a, um, uh, an individual to follow up and check on these uh, uh, buildings. I, I'm, not, I'm not happy with this. Uh, they're talking uh, in here that a, a deed either drafted by or acceptable to the town attorney shall be prepared for the conveyance of the approximately 1,645 square foot area referred to as parcel A. The deed shall be recorded si uh, simultaneously. Uh, can we rip apart these neighborhoods anymore? Can we make any more messes? Are you comfortable with this, Mark? Do you think this is about the last adjustment over there <laughs> that is a wet area and it does say by the way and I have the copies here uh, wetland crossing and associated wetland restoration for mitigation work is proposed in order to provide access to a proposed new house lot which will include impacts within the 50-foot wetland conservation district I think we're crazy with all this building in the wetlands so I'm not uh, I'm not happy about this. Regina. Nothing, Mr. Chairman. Jim. I'm set. Rick. I'm okay. All right. Seeing we now do we suspend this meeting or do we? Uh, this would be there'll be a, a further public hearing. All right. So there will be a fur, further public hearing on this this matter. The second of the uh, third public hearing is RSA 4114A first hearing 817 Ocean Boulevard map 197. Lot 31 dash 1. Petition is a request to release town owned deed restriction on formerly leased land. Deed restriction, the only structures permitted to be erected upon or placed upon the lot shall be a single family dwelling containing no more than four bedrooms, no more than a two car garage, no commercial use shall be made on the premises with the except of an existence or execution of the deed. So Mr. Mr. Chairman, just to uh, inform the board, uh, we have the comments back from the Conservation Commission and from the Planning Board, and they have both requested that the Board of Selectmen not approve. Um, actually, I think that's the 217th Street. Oh, I thought that's where we were. No, no we're, 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 okay, on we're on 817. 817. 817 is fine. <laughs> yeah, well, it's they, they support that on 817. It's, it's, uh, it's all second. Uh, 16th, 17th Street that they do not support. Okay, so is there anybody from the public that would like to speak on this public hearing? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board. Mary Louise? I'm trying to sort all this stuff here. Um, 817 Ocean Boulevard, 17th Street. We've got so much of a pile here, you need a secretary to sort it out. Uh, well, that's why they give it to us so we can <laughs> um, Dum, 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 the only structures. <laughs> single-family dwelling. So this release of town-owned land deed restriction. I, I gather the situation was that <clears throat> there are already two pre-existing dwellings on the <laughs> lot. Yes. And they want to ensure that there's no title problems. Okay. We, so we it's frequently not adding more building there. Uh, apparently not. Okay. Thank you. I no. appreciate Regina, that. Yeah. I'm good, thank you. I'm good. Good, right. Yeah, this is the one that's we've heard from over and over again, isn't it? Um, it's I, one of them. Yeah. 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 Okay. So the next one we have, we'll close that public hearing, and the next one we have is the uh, RSA 4114A first hearing, number 217th Street, map, street map 168, lot 78-1. They would like to cr construct a five, five and a half foot by ten by ten high freestanding storage building on their property, four and a half feet from the side of the rear of the property line. I'm just uh, handing out uh, for the board to look at uh, the uh, schematic that I guess was presented to the planning board, so that it can be seen where the uh, proposed shed is uh, to the uh, right there. the back side of the lot. Mm -hmm. uh, 
as Fred had indicated, this was the one where both the planning board and the conservation commission recommended against it. All right. Is there anybody from the audience would like to speak on this public hearing? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the board, Mary Louise. Yes, this is another outrageous mess down at the beach. There's this cramming all this stuff in one lot. I was in the planning board one morning and a nice lady came in who lives in that area and she was complaining about having a terrible problem there with water for the lack of pervious surface in those areas. And jamming all this stuff into one little lot down at the beach is outrageous and I absolutely agree with the planning board. Any other one? Gina? So this is just one dwelling? Yes. Yeah. But if the lot isn't even 100 feet. Yeah. And some of it's out in the right of way. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So we will uh, bring this back. Is this, this one? Come back in two weeks? Two weeks. Yes. Oh, two weeks hearing. for the public okay. hearing. <clears throat> so that concludes the public hearings. Now we're at the public comment period. Is there anybody from the audience who would like to speak in public comment? Come right up here and give your name and. <laughs> we'll call the microphone just a little bit so we can hear you. Um, forgive me, I have a terrible cold. <clears throat> um, my name is Teresa Evans, and I'm a former PTA president and a parent of children in the Hampton School Districts, um, and I come here tonight to give my concern about um, the budget meeting that took place on January 9th. Okay. <clears throat> um, so um, I felt it was important to come and speak to the Committee of Selectmen and voice um, my concern as a community member and parent um, that I was both stung and disappointed by the, I'm going to call them proceedings, that the recent budget committee had on January 9th. <clears throat> Having forced myself to watch it in its entirety, um, I came away feeling physically sick. I realized that in some ways the budget committee has deemed themselves the sheriffs, protecting the citizens of Hampton from those who seek money from the tax people. I have no objection um, to discussions, to curious inquiry, inc inquiry and even well-mannered disagreement. This is not not why I came tonight to speak. The committee, not all members, is my caveat, <laughs> but several members of the committee came uh, with clearly hostile intentions, seeking to disrupt, demoralize, and condescend our SAU Superintendent Kathleen Murphy and Nathan Lunny. I've spoken to many, and words like inappropriate, unacceptable, demeaning, and abhorrent have been used to describe the overarching tone of that meeting. For the chairman to use words to describe prior budgets as suspicious speaks against the clear transparency of the SAU team. Um, to antagonize Superintendent Murphy about his detaste for words like collective bargaining, not a concept she penned, or taunting of the word cop in place of our school's language of safety resource officer was petty and unprofessional. For a member of the committee to seek specifics on security of our schools in a public forum is both mindless and arrogant. Seeking self-importance is man's greatest flaw. There are truly no words for the exchange of the inappropriate remarks that the chairman made not once, but twice, regarding seeking hugs and kisses from a professional woman representing our schools. Did he cross a line? Would he have made those comments if it was a man? Um, how can you, in a position of authority, a, a word he likes to use and enjoys using himself, bargaining for his vote for a hug and kiss? Perhaps, Perhaps best left to the wisdom of the young, <clears throat> it's described by a 13-year-old as creepy and inappropriate. We are raising our children to speak out against such disrespect. In closing, I offer a piece of advice to the Budget Committee. <clears throat> Read the book, Team of Rivals. 
This is the story of Abe Lincoln and the creation of his cabinet. He surrounded himself with opposing views, even those that ran against him in the election, for the betterment of the nation. He never spoke ill and welcomed differences with respect and character. To leave with a voice much wiser than I, he penned, nearly all men are able to stand adversity, but if you want to test a man's character, give him power. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to also encourage that we have more room tomorrow night at the upcoming meeting, if we could move it to a larger room than this. Well, that's, that's up to that board themselves. Okay. It's not up to us. Okay. I, I totally agree with you. I think it's uh, poor planning to do it in this room, and I think there's going to be a lot of people there. There are. Um, so hopefully, maybe he'll hear this and we'll encourage him to Thank to you. Move. I appreciate your time. I'd like to actually add on to what you just said about sure. all that. Um, I went down this afternoon and spoke with the superintendent, and she did say that she had not heard back from the budget committee chairman, nor had I at that time. That was about 4 o'clock, a little bit before 4 o'clock. And she did say that if, you know, that decision is made, that she would be able ready to, to go with have it. the school all ready to go. Mm -hmm. So rush the way too. Right, yeah. yeah. It's ready to go if it's requested. That's all that needs to happen. So. Oh, good. Thank you very Thank much you for coming. Thank you so much. Out. I appreciate your time, folks. Is there anybody else from the audience that would like to speak? Public comment. Yes. Hi, guys. Um, Megan Riley on 14 Toby Street. So I wanted to follow up um, from last year. I resubmitted a warrant article for construction of a sidewalk on Mace Road. And um, we had great feedback and support uh, from the town last year, and I'd like to see it approved this, this year. Um, <clears throat> there were a lot of questions on feasibility last year, and as I put in the article, uh, this project was evaluated, um, and it can be done, and as it's within the town's right of way. So I know that was a question that we got quite a bit. I just wanted to make sure that I shared that. Um, and also the estimate includes the necessary components um, such as tree removal to complete the sidewalk so um, I'm happy to see that there's been discussion um, about uh, a fund for sidewalk projects in the future um, but we're not there yet so this proposal uh, for a sidewalk would connect two major roads sidewalks and it's near our schools um, providing a much safer option uh, for our residents and students it's my understanding, um, as I live right near there, that someone was hit walking on Mace Road this summer, uh, which we've talked about as being a concern. Um, and I know I personally don't want to see that happen to anyone else or anyone in my family or friends or anyone in the community. I think our children and families deserve better than that. So I hope the community uh, will support this article and we can keep the momentum going for future sidewalks, uh, projects, and a safer Hampton. So thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else from the public that would like to speak? <laughs> Michelle? Um, good evening, Michelle Zeno. I just wanted to give a quick little synopsis. We just met with the USS Virginia uh, team upstairs, and just wanted to let you all know that we have been sworn in as a committee. Um, and as far as people to speak with, uh, Mike Edgar will be chairing the USS Virginia, and I will be vice chair. So if there's uh, communication questions that you have, uh, you can contact either one of us. And we do have another, obviously, a team with a treasurer and a clerk and all of that. Uh, and that's it. I just want to make sure that you well, know. Thank you guys for stepping up. I know there was yeah. some question of, of who was going to do it, but I think it's a, it, was, it was valuable when we had the USS Hampton here. I think it's an honor to, to uh, be the host city for the USS Virginia, and, uh, and we're looking forward to seeing some great stuff. Yeah, we feel that way too. We had about 11 people there tonight, so awesome. it's fantastic. Very good. All right, thank, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else from the public that would like to speak? Seeing none, I will bring it back to the board for, for announcements and community calendar. Yeah, I'd like to. Uh, sway a little bit from announcements and I'd like to back up what was said by the woman from the school. I went down to see the superintendent the next day also, Rusty did too, to apologize for the behavior of a chairman to a, 
a, to a valid, valued employee. It was not only sexist, it was misogynist, and it was outright disrespect, dis, disrespectful. It was terrible. It never should have taken place. This is 2019. It is not 1950. If the town manager had said that, if the police chief or the deputy had said something like that to a, a female, they'd be gone. It was outrageous behavior. Thank you. Rick? No, but I agree with that. Thank you. Mary Louise? No, thank you. I'm, I'm all set. Regina? Yes, it was outrageous behavior. There's a lot of that around here lately. <laughs> um, I like to say something about the upstairs to reflect what Michelle Zeno just said. Very positive meeting. I had to leave a little bit early because I had to come down here. But I think that uh, I received a list of activities that the Navy crew is looking to do. And I know Renee has some ideas with Parks and Recs, and I hope that uh, maybe the rest of the town could put some things together. These guys are definitely willing to help us, and hopefully we can help them back. They spent their uh, a long time on the ship, so I hope that uh, the voters also see that the warrant article we have to appropriate some funds to make it a little easier for everyone gets passed this year. Okay, thank you. That's all I have to say for community events. I have a couple of things. Filing opens on January 24th, closes on February 1st for positions within the town. I know we have two budget committee members. We have a board of selectmen member. I believe there's a couple of school board members, and I'm sure there's other others that are out there. But if you're interested and we're looking for people, sign up. Those are the times. So between January 24th and February 1st. Remind everybody that the deliberative session is February 2nd. Voting will be the second Tuesday in March. Uh, okay, Rick. Yeah. I just wanted to say, because um, I've heard a few things lately um, about uh, people have brought it to my attention. Um, I think it's important to remember that these town um, positions that are up for election are non-political. Absolutely. You do not have to be Republican. You do not have to be Democrat. And there's uh, and. <clears throat> if you feel that you are one, just that you're only going to answer to one, you shouldn't be there because you should be working for the whole town, Absolutely. and whether you're a Republican, Democrat, or Independent. And I think it's uh, a, several people have brought it to my attention, and we need to keep that in mind. It's always non-political. Mary Louise, you just need to have a thick skin. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's um, different if it's the. Uh, state reps or whatever that's right. a different ball game altogether yeah. just real, real quickly though uh, representative Cushing bless his heart uh, who keeps us up to date uh, is working with his uh, fellow representatives on ha House Bill 352 uh, to restore state aid grants program for sewer projects maybe we can get a little money out of Concord it's a hope I have one other thing I, I, I heard at one of the the budget committee meetings with uh, one of the members there spouting off that, you know, our taxes are going to be $10,000 next year. Well, I asked our assessing office, the, media, the average tax bill in Hampton this year is about $6,500. The average single family house is about $7,000. That's on a value of $412,000. Uh, so I don't know where they got that it's ten thousand dollars, but I, I felt that that was uh, 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 trying to scare people. I think if you check your taxes in this town and you compare them with any town around us, you will see by far that you get more tax dollars or more for your tax dollar than you will in any community. And I will challenge that to anybody, to any town that's around us. Hampton has one of the best tax rates for what we get for services in this town, be it our schools, be it our public works, be it our police department, our fire department, our rec department, whatever it is. So the fear mongering has to stop. So thank you. Next we have consent agenda. We have a letter of no objection for a transfer of a liquor license. We have a parade and public gathering license. We have a sign permit, and we have use of town property for a half marathon. 
I'll move the consent agenda. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Um, before we leave that, Mr. Chairman, if you have a minute. Um, I sent a, a heads up to, uh, to Fred today because the last uh, time uh, we voted on the consent agenda, it was in December, um, we had a uh, memo or information from the uh, MRI and, uh, and Mr. Tinker, and part of that information was faulty. And we do have a correction tonight, I see. It's dated January 14th. But I would prefer, that was, that was caught up in the miscellany of the consent agenda the last time. If we're going to be getting any communications in the future from the uh, MRI and anything to do with uh, assessed evaluation, I think that should be addressed separately. I agree with uh, Selectman Wilsley. That's fine. Yeah. Because I don't want my name signed on a document that is not correct. And if it's just lumped in with the miscellany on the uh, consent agenda, uh, that doesn't help. And I do want a corrected uh, memo for us to, to sign on that. Very good. Next, we have appointments. We have Chief Sawyer from the Police Department with a departmental update. Chief Sawyer, Deputy Hobbs, how are you? Good evening. Mr. Chairman, there was one other piece of business um, I mentioned uh, to Christina for this appointment. The Special Olympics uh, Penguin Plunge is coming up on the 2nd and 3rd, and I didn't know if you wanted to do that tonight, if we could, or if you want to wait till the next meeting so we can put it on the agenda. Um, let's see. What's the 28th? What's the pleasure of the board? It's the second or third of uh, February. February, correct. Yeah. You do it every year, right? Yep. yep. Right. What do you need from us? Basically, just your, your uh, good blessing to close down uh, the road for the traffic pattern being uh, H Street, uh, down to H Street, turning Ashworth Avenue two-way, all the way down to D Street, and then back up to D Street to Ocean Boulevard. As you've done for okay. Same plan we've had for the last 25, 20 years. I'll or make that motion. Years. I'll second it. Motion second. Question. Have you got a weather report? Too far out. You, you're good about three to four days with that one. All those in favor? <laughs> And, and we can mention it every week. Yeah, and we can mention it on the 28th again. So right. we'll thank you. That. So that's appreciate good. Thank that. you. So we are here for the uh, departmental update. And as you remember, we've gone adopted that at the uh, first one of this year is the review of last year. So our current uh, full-time staffing level was 35 sworn. You remember we gained a position with the vote last year, uh, part, yeah, uh, last uh, town meeting to add the additional um, school resource officer. In January, also Tim Galva retired after 32 years of service to the department. We congratulate Tim on his retirement, and I'm happy to report he will remain with the department as a part-time officer. In April, Officer Justin LaDuke graduated from the 175th New Hampshire Police Academy. Officer LaDuke resides in Epping, New Hampshire. And Officer LaDuke began his career as a part-time officer with the department in 2016. Officers Jason Jackson, Vitaly Sorokins, and Matthew Robinson were assigned to some corporals successfully filling those positions from June until September. In July, Officer Coy DeMarco was assigned as Detective SRO at the Hampton Academy, replacing Matthew Robinson, who has returned to the Patrol Division. In July, Officer Shannon Feely was assigned as Detective SRO for the Marston School and Senna School. Officer Justin Goudreau was assigned as Assistant Prosecutor in July. In August, Officer Robert Delato graduated from the 176 New Hampshire Police Academy. Officer Delato resides in Hampton, and Officer Delato began his career as a part-time officer with the department in 2017. In December, Officer Howie Felch graduated from the 177th New Hampshire Police Academy. Officer Felch resides in Seabrook, New Hampshire. Officer Felch began her career as a part-time officer with the department in 2017. Our current part-time staffing level is at 31 uh, as of December. The following part-time officers left their positions with the department in 2018. We wish them the best in their future endeavors. Uh, William Polino, Ian Ford, Robert Delato, Haley Erickson, Connor Sutherland, Connor Perry, Luke Wellington, Harley Felch, Sean Grant, Jordan Estevez, and Joe LaMagna. It should be noted of the 11 officers who left their part-time positions, seven were hired as full-time officers 
including two with the Hampton Police Department being Robert Delato and Harley Felch. <clears throat> Twelve new part-time special officers came to work for the department in 2018. Casey Spaulding, Andrew Bistany, Stephen Nickerson, Kevin Smith, Jordan Estevez, Zachary Terenzoni, Philip Rizzi, Daniela Tupi, David Lilly, Adam Ivanik, Jeffrey Cabrera, and Adam Ryan. Each of the new officers succeeded in a rigorous hiring process and completed 200 hours of training to receive certification as part-time officers of the New Hampshire Police Stands and Training Council. An additional 100 hours of department training was required before the new officers could start their patrol duties. Civilian personnel, we have uh, nine full-time civilian personnel. In May, Holly Simmons assumed the duties as communication specialist. In August, Jordan Towers assumed the duties of the communication specialist. In November, communication specialist Rhonda Stevens retired after 20 years of service to the department. We congratulate Rhonda on retirement, and I'm happy to report she will remain with the department as a part-time communication specialist. In December, Christine partially assumed the duties of communication specialist. Training and recruitment. Recruitment and retention continue to be areas of focus of concern for the department and for law enforcement across the country. Each year takes extraordinary efforts by our training cadre to prepare our special part-time officers for the summer beach operation. Our supervisory personnel did an outstanding job leading and mentoring a team that provided for a safe and enjoyable summer season. In addition to our in-house training programs, the Hampton Police Department hosts some of the finest law enforcement training in the country in our training room. Many of these training sessions are attended by officers from around the United States and Canada. The prestigious list of training includes what is not limited to the New Hampshire Police Standards and Training Part-Time Officer Academy, two sessions, New Hampshire State Police Civil Disorder Training, New England Crisis Negotiator Association, Leaders Helping Leaders Network, uh, the GSPCC Social Media, and the FBI Law Enforcement Executive Development Association, five courses. The department, was, the department was recognized in May as a recipient of the 2018 Tom Stone FBI Leader Award of Excellence. The annual award was established to recognize a member of the association for outstanding achievement in promoting the science and art of law enforcement management. Department operations. The department investigated 31 overdose cases in 2018, eight of which resulted in death. The patrol division and the criminal investigation division continue to work diligently with our local, state, and federal partners to combat the opiate epidemic the region continues to experience. The department continues to have an officer assigned to the regional federal task force to help combat this issue. The department has continued with regional efforts working with the Portsmouth Police Department, the Greenland Police Department, and Seabrook Police Department to form a Seacoast Region High Intensity Drug Intervention Team utilizing grant funds from the New Hampshire Department of Safety Law Enforcement Opiate Abuse Reduction Initiative. In August, the town was faced with a significant challenge when an outbreak of Legionnaires disease was identified in the beach area. The outbreak posed a direct threat to public safety and the economic viability of the community. The town's response was placed under the direction of emergency management team who partnered with both state and federal health agencies to deal with the crisis. The Hampton Police Department headquarters was utilized as the operations center for the unified response and the department was active in supporting this mission. With a continuing shortage of officers, the department continued with a program of bringing in experienced officers from other agencies to augment our staffing levels on weekends and during special events. This has proven to be very helpful in maintaining order and providing for good traffic flow through the beach area. Special thanks to the New Hampshire State Police, Rockingham County Sheriff's Department, University of New Hampshire Police Department, Epping Police Department, Exeter Police Department, Greenland Police Department, and the Seacoast Emergency Re Response Team, which all provided personnel and equipment to assist during our busy seasons. I'd also like to thank the Seabrook Police Department for their continued cooperation and coordination of traffic control along the Ocean Boulevard corridor. The department also would work closely with the New Hampshire Liquor Enforcement Bureau conducting compliance checks and coordinating efforts to reduce the level of over-service and enforcement of underage drinking laws. Additional thanks to the New Hampshire Department of Transportation, New Hampshire Homeland Security and Emergency Management, and the New Hampshire National Guard 12th Civil Support Team. Special note of thanks to each of these agencies for their continued support and cooperation, making Hampton a great place to live and visit. Uh, at the bottom, you'll see a summary of our activities compared to the same period last year. Um, I won't go over the, the numbers, I'll just give you the uh, percentage change. Our calls for service were up 2%, motor vehicle stops were down 1%, arrests were down 24%, DWI, DWI is up 6%, drug offenses were down 46%, 
incidents reported down 12%, offenses down 12%, felonies down 9%, parking tickets up 45%, and accidents were down a little bit under a half of a percent. And I'll take any questions. Any questions from the board? Mary Louise. Um, well, well, let me start with this. You go back a ways, as I do, and I remember when we had 63 part-time specials, and we thought that was pretty terrible. We were aiming for 90 or something. 70. Was the, when I came here, it was 70 the was the target. days? Yeah. Um, with the school, uh, with the discussions uh, related to the school and the school resource officers, et cetera, my concern for your department is robbing you of say three full-time officers. What, what exactly are you going to have? Are you going to have part-time officers in, in the schools? I I have a hard time drawing. It, this is during the school season. Now, of course, in the summer the, you'll have your whole available staff. But what? How? How might it hurt your department by having two or three? full-time officers during the school season to protect uh, the, the youngsters. I, I'm, I'm having a hard time wrestling with that. I'm trying to wrestle with how anybody could conceive that it would be a detriment. It's, a, it's, a, it's an additional officer. But, so. right, but the, these are extras. You're having trouble getting officers is my point. No, we have trouble finding part-time officers. I think you'll find that the office, our recruitment effort, as far as the people we bring in full-time, yeah. has been outstanding. Uh, I'm in the process now of hiring, I believe, my eighth officer as chief of police full-time. Okay. And I would tell you right now, through the process, uh, because of our recruitment efforts and not lowering our standards just mm -hmm. to get numbers, if we had five openings right now, I could fill them. Okay. Confidently, because so. you don't feel that you're short staffing yourself by having the SRO two, three, four SRO officers in the schools. No, again, it's an additional That's officer. Chance. So our full time okay. complement. If this if this Warren article were to pass in March, yeah. which I hope the voters would again not listen to some of the crazy talk I heard the other night at the budget committee. That was just unbelievable that people would make the comments they made. One person commented that you know we've got to stop this. It's the same person as a member of the Board of Selectmen endorsed the Warren article to add four officers when he sat on the Board of Selectmen. But all of a sudden, one is too many. Just ridiculous commentary. Um, this is an additional officer okay. that would bring the staffing up to 36. Okay. And I remember back to your time, yeah. uh, previously on the Board, there was a study done that says the Hampton Police Department should be at 44. Yeah. Oh. 1988, that yes. study was done. Yes. So that's what my concern is not not using resources office, resource officers, but if you are being shortchanged in your day-to-day -day administration of the officers, the number of officers you have to field out in the community. No, I feel that this would enhance our ability there. Okay. That the area where we're concerned about with the shortage is with our part-time ranks. As you said, uh, it wasn't 70. We, we, we are awarded 70 spots. Right now we sit at 31. Now that number is going to probably increase uh, as we get closer to the summer. We have an academy class starting right. on February 2nd. Mm -hmm. I'm meeting with the director of police standards and training tomorrow mm -hmm. to coordinate the schedule for that because we mm -hmm. are the satellite site for the academy. Okay. So we'll be running classes Tuesday and Thursday evenings down at the police department, mm -hmm. being simulcast from the academy to, uh, I, believe, I believe it's... Um, I know one of them is Keene, and I forget what the other, I think it's Littleton. And so mm -hmm. they'll be broadcasting that to those three sites. Those officers, along with three that we got from the Summer Academy, will be coming back to work. So hopefully there's up to ten, and maybe if we can pick up a few certified officers elsewhere, we can get up as many as a dozen. Mm -hmm. Now, depending on how many people leave, that'll kind mm -hmm. of the attrition rate. So looking at it as now, it's probably the best we've been in. That recruiting class we just had is the best mm -hmm. class we've had in five years. Because while I was watching the discussion of the budget committee, my concern was, are we shortchanging the man on the street, your uniformed officers out there chasing down whatever, by, by um, segregating the SROs to just school duty, basically? No, actually, I, th I think it actually enhances, because if you look at the okay. fact that if we have an SRO on the grounds of a school, mm -hmm. they handle all the call calls at that school, whatever they may be. Mm -hmm. 
that frees up the officers that are out in patrol doing okay, the routine so patrol. So we're not going to reduce the patrol ranks. Okay. We're just adding an SRO. Okay. Well, I just hope to clarify that because yep. it was rather a wild Boy, I, I think some people are actually trying to make it a mystery when it's really not oh, well, I don't, I don't, that mysterious. I don't want a mystery, but I just want to be yeah. reassured that our um, duly constituted law enforcement <clears throat> officers are fully staffed in the community to respond exclusive of the SROs who are handling their own. Thing. There shouldn't be any change to those numbers, and it actually yeah. will reduce their responses okay. to schools because we'll have people okay. there. Regina. And one, mm -hmm. one other quick thing, uh, I'm, it's good that, that Rhonda is staying with you yeah. for these, but I want to compliment you and the department. I had occasion about a month ago to make an emergency call, which I don't do very often, and the dispatcher was incredible. I had a problem uh, that related to the uh, wa uh, air in the water lines, <clears throat> which made me very cross. And uh, I asked for help. Uh, the nice lady took my phone number. Uh, about 10 minutes later, I received a call from a technician at Aquarian who was going to come back and rescue me. And then after about 15 minutes, the dispatcher called back to be sure that I was okay, that I was getting help, etc. A plus, excellent service with police dispatch, and I was very proud of, of her and of your uh, department that Thank evening. you, and again, if you think you remember what I said, one of the things I tried to institute with our new folks coming in, I don't want to hear somebody say, there's nothing we can do for you, it's not our problem. Mm -hmm. We may not be the answer, but we can certainly get you to the person that has the answer, and that's a great example of that, so I'm glad that's worked, worked out. Very professional, very nice, and made, even though I was really cross, <laughs> it, it, <laughs> It cooled me down a little bit. I'm glad to hear it. Thank you. Regina. Yes. Thank you, Chief, Deputy Chief. You guys do an awesome job. Um, and you've always been there for the town long before my selectman career. You were always there. And I know you'll continue to be always there. As far as since this SROs got brought up, I want to say one thing. We have one at Wanakonit, and then we have two others right now. Correct? Correct. Well, we have... Uh, Jim DeLuker is at Winnicunit, yeah. Clay DeMarco is at the Academy, <laughs> and Shannon Field is doing double duty between the Center and Marston. And all these went to town meeting for a vote, and they all passed, correct? Yes. All right, thank you very much. Very Jim? Good. Yeah, you guys do a great job. Um, you do a great job in the summer. You keep the beach calm. That's amazing. <laughs> I mean, the number of people and sometimes the quality, of the number of drinks that go down, you guys do a great job. Uh, I agree 100% with the SRO. Uh, you know, not only are they there at the schools, but they're preventing crime from happening in the future by by developing a relationship with students, developing a relationship with the town. So I, I think it's a it's a great program, and it should be continued. Uh, when you talk about interesting statistics on the back page here, DWI is up six percent. That's never good. No, the the. The alcohol issues in the town uh, have been one of my biggest concerns, um, prior, being prior to being chief. And, and I understand the business model. My family was in business years ago, and I understand, you know, we're, we are made, we have made Hampton Beach a true destination. I mean, I hear from people, you know, that I went to the National Academy, hey, I saw an ad for Hampton Beach, and it really looks like a great place, and I've had them come visit. And I guess we take it for granted. We, you know, we look at it every day, and they come up, and they just think it's an amazing place. And you take a step back, it is, but that's because the people that think it's an amazing place are on vacation, and they're kind of letting their problems go. I know when I go on vacation, wherever it is, you know, I come back and rave about Nashville. It's an amazing place. I don't know if the Nashville police officers working the street would agree, because they got to deal with, with those problems like we do. So it's one of those constant battles. You know, we don't want to become an impediment to people's good time, but we also have to draw a line somewhere. And, you know, a lot of it has to do with the over-service of alcohol down there and people... I don't know what it is. We uh, really seem to have a good handle on the impaired driving for a while. People are using things like <coughs> Uber and, and Lyft and, oh. and being much smarter about it. And mm -hmm. I don't know what happened, but over the last year to 18 months, it just seems to have gone back the other way. And I, I don't know what to attribute that to yet. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Drug offense is down 46%. That's super, That's isn't it? Or is that, is, I that think, is that a real statistic? Um, uh, listen. Uh, 
we give statistics because it's a jumping off point. Statistics can say a lot of things yeah. and it takes a lot of interpretation. One of the things is you'll notice that we had one more death this year, opiate, than we did the year before, yeah. Yeah. yet the number of times um, we investigated overdoses was reduced and the number of times Narcan was deployed in this town was almost cut in half. So what does that tell you? Does it mean fewer people are using it? Is the education working? Is the rehabilitation working? It's hard to put a handle on that. Now, there's other factors because I know people, as business people, uh, I met with a group of real estate folks the other day, uh, the morning, to talk about <coughs> what could we do. And some of them are already carrying Narcan because they go into some of the same places we go into and could get contaminated if somebody left something there. Um, and, and that's a serious health concern for people. Um, so dealing with those type of issues, so is it because more people are carrying Narcan and using it on friends or family and not calling us? I don't know. I don't think the time period, the measurement period, uh, is really long enough in duration to make a, a true determination of that. My hope is is that we're getting smarter in our uh, approach to the problem, that it's not always going to be the enforcement, it's the follow-up, it's the education, and the follow-up with people that are trying to rehabilitate from that and giving them, getting them to the treatment that they need and the follow-through on it is really the key. Super. Parking tickets up 45%. That shows that, that those guys are out there doing their job. Yeah, we were able to really enhance that program this year. Uh, one of our uh, retired officers came back and in parking enforcement capacity. Um, Mr. Hamlin was back again, and then we had a new member join the team. And they really took the challenge that we, we wanted to reduce. And it's one of those ways we can reduce um, the officers getting involved in that and have them focus on more important issues by having this park and enforcement team. So I know there's some concerns going on um, with the budget committee about the combination of the parking lots with the enforcement as one unit. Um, and I would hate to see that be jeopardized because they showed great productivity. And it's you know not that we're the police departments in the business of revenue, but in that area, it's an area where I think it's legitimate because we're trying to ticket the areas particularly where the residents have parking spots and people are taking those. So I hope uh, we can get through the budgetary process with that impact. Super. <coughs> yes, right. um, I would agree uh, with everyone that you seem to be doing a great job. Um, I think since I've been here um, and I'm coming up uh, on my 15th year this next uh, year this is the most in the with the, you have 10 categories here on activity and seven of them are down mm -hmm. so that's an amazing statistic in itself so I think that's the best that I've seen so sometimes low business is Good business. So in this in those categories that we're knocking it down, I really want to try to work on the alcohol the alcohol issues this year or the DWI and really yeah. try we'll to get that message across. Work. Thank you. You know, I, I've talked to a number of people about the SRO officers and Jim DeLuca up, up to the high school. The one nice thing about it is there the kids trust him, they talk with him, and I'm sure because of that he builds a rapport with them and that saves us a lot at that. Yeah. And then seeing uh, Officer DeMarco and, and uh, Feely? Yep, Shannon Feely. With Shannon out here. They're out every morning, whether it's raining, snowing, sunny out, directing the traffic at the schools, making sure the kids get across the crosswalks. Yeah. I think that's an excellent opportunity for the for them to work with these kids, and, and I think our, they, they're also doing a great job in the, in the school. So I think you're right. That does head off some mm -hmm. other problems that you would have further on down the road. And it gives them the kids a rapport to know an officer, to talk to an officer. So if they have an issue, they can bring that up to them. And I think that's yeah. invaluable. And to be fair, I, I, I appreciate the concerns that people express sometimes about these programs. To recall, I was one of, the first, one of the first two SROs in this community. And I remember those days. There was a lot of controversy, a lot of concern about having an armed police officer in the schools. Mm. Now it's kind of passe. People expect it. Um, but I do respect opinions that don't like it. I, I truly do. I understand that there's different opinions on it. What I, I think nobody appreciated was the negative manner in which those were expressed. Some of the some of the egregious comments, um, you know, that the comment was made that the police were at fault for the parking lot shooting. No, no, the shooter was at fault. The person with homicide and harm in their heart 
caused that tragedy. Now, were there problems with the response of Parkwood? Absolutely, absolutely. What that has to do with a proposal for an SRO and how we approach school safety in the town of Hampton is beyond me or why anybody would reach that low to try to sink something they don't agree with. Uh, it just was egregious. Uh, you know, another comment made was that, you know, in their time on the board, they were they were always just S, you know they were just officers, and all of a sudden, miraculously, they're detectives. That was done eight years ago. Eight years ago. But this is what we're bringing up to tear down what we don't agree with. Mm -hmm. I respect not agreeing with it. Cast your vote, speak your mind on that. But to go to those low levels is really getting beyond common decency. And I only bring this up in light of the fact that we're going to have an important meeting tomorrow night. And I would hope people, whatever their opinions are of any, anything that's going on with the budget with the schools, it's OK to disagree. But don't tear people down individually. Don't tear down institutions or people that are coming to do what they believe is their best work. You can just disagree. And, and I would respect if the taxpayers voted this down. I would say they couldn't afford it. They didn't believe they could afford it. And we'll do the best we can without it. But we don't have to get personal, and we don't have to get negative like that. And I hope tomorrow night people have, have heard what some of the people said tonight and hear that. You can be diplomatic in your disagreements. There's no reason to get like that, and I hope we can avoid that tomorrow. I couldn't agree with you more. I hope that we have uh, plenty of people, and I encourage everybody to come out, because it's not only the school budget tomorrow night, it's, it's the yeah. town budget, yeah. too. So it is your one time to speak at the public hearing, and I hope people do that. Yeah, Russ, one more really quick request. Sure. And you know, you and I discussed this uh, regarding Legionnaires when you were running back and forth with all the state people mm -hmm. and whatever. Uh, could you please repeat a request to them that if they're sending down messages, because the crew in Channel 22 will tell you, they can <laughs> adjust whatever the state sends down. So please will the state send down something on white background, black print, and big enough so people know there's a scary disease out there. Understand that was, that was the first time in my 30-year career that I've dealt with the, the Department of Health and Human Services. Yeah. And you did an uh, excellent job. Thank you, I appreciate you. that. And I, nothing against them, they were great people, but I hope it's the last time because that was a scary thing. Yeah. Uh, when you say the state, you gotta remember the state's made up of many different entities and you get, you get different responses from them depending on the circumstances. And I'll be honest, most of the relationships we've had with the state have been pretty good. I, I really don't, as police chief, I don't have a lot of complaints with the Department of Transportation, Department of Safety, mm -hmm. the parks, and, and meeting these people in the Health and Human Services, they were amazing. Yeah. But that message did get across to them. And if we have any future yeah. occurrences, if you see that, pick up the phone and let me know, because obviously in my role as chief and emergency yeah. management director, yeah. I'm usually the point person on those things yeah. that I can get things changed. Because they sent three pages of mush. I know. And that know. doesn't help the public. Nope. Any other you're trying to help the public. I just want to make one statement Virginia. since we're talking yep. about this right now. Also on the warrant, which Selectman Griffin also brought up, is the election of officers. So if you have any major concerns with your elected officials throughout the whole town, <laughs> that's another good reason to go to deliberative mm -hmm. session and town meeting and cast your vote. And also put your uh, name out there and offer to um, be a candidate. Exactly. There's always room for someone else. Well, I offered my sentiments to the, uh, the panel I met with on Friday about what could we do as citizens? Get involved with the local government. Yeah. That's Absolutely. the most important yeah. thing you can yeah. do. It's the most, you know, it just amazes me every time we have a national election, 10,000 people show up to vote, and at the next town meeting we only have 3,000. Oh, yeah. When you look at your daily life, who impacts it? It's your local elections that impact your daily life more than anything else. Totally agree. Run for office or get involved, vote, be there. Be a, a participant in your future. Don't let other people make the decision in your name because you probably won't be happy in the end. Yeah. So that's the end of my political speech. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> anything else for the chief of deputy? Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good night. You tell those nice dispatchers thank you. I will. Next one's up. We have a Aquarian with a fourth quarter report. I think you can.
Good evening. Good evening. If the IT guys are paying attention, we'll get our slideshow up here. But we'll, uh, we'll make sure they, if they're all back there and they haven't <laughs> seen it come up yet, if they could come out and help us a little bit to make sure that this is going up right. What? Oh, there it is. Thank you. See how good they are? Thank the you back for the back. Hang on, yeah. wait a minute. It's the eyes that dies you can't see. God, give me a minute there, say. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so good evening. Thanks for uh, allowing us to come in uh, for our quarterly update. Uh, to my near right, Stan Lawrence, our Director of Engineering Planning, and before it's John Hurley, our Vice President for Water Quality Environmental Management, and I'm Carl McMorn, the Local Operations Manager. If you go to the next slide, please. This is the brief agenda we want to cover tonight, give you an update on the PFAS, um, talk about some of the other treatment improvements we've got going on, the status of the uh, permit application for Well 22, and uh, a, a larger main replacement project. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, John Hurley. Good evening. Happy New Year. It's good to be with you again. Uh, I'm going to uh, provide an update on the progress we've made in 2018 relative to PFAS and drinking water. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, how our water measures up against the standards recently uh, proposed by New Hampshire DES. And then I'm going to talk about our plan for managing PFAS in 2019. Uh, Regarding progress, uh, we, we were very, very busy in 2018. So first of all, we minimized the use of well six. In 2016 and prior years, well six was essentially on 12 months of the year. And in 2017, we reduced that to about seven and a half months, uh, turning it off in uh, August. And in 2018, we got that down to two and a half months. So in terms of water produced from well number six, it's on the order of an 80% reduction from well number six, which is the well that has the highest PFAS levels. And that's the Mill Road well, John? That's in the Mill, Mill Road, Road well field, right. Uh, we continued our uh, sampling and testing of the well water and the tap water, uh, 129 samples, uh, and with uh, 26 compounds tested per sample, that's over 3,000 uh, analytical results reported. Uh, we completed the private well testing project with New Hampshire DES. That was uh, on the order of 75 samples. Uh, we continued the PFAS treatment evaluation, and Dan will be telling you more about that shortly. We developed a new source of supply, well 22, uh, and the intention there is to use that well that has very low PFAS on the order of uh, less than five parts per trillion, to use that supply to uh, enable us to either minimize or hopefully eliminate uh, the use of the wells that have the higher PFAS levels. Uh, also, we inst installed Sentinel wells along Mill Road. So these are uh, monitoring wells, not production wells, and they're in between our production wells and some of the uh, PFAS uh, sources that are in that Mill Road area. Um, a, a big, uh, a big uh, uh, victory, uh, New Hampshire DES eliminated the PFAS discharge from the car wash. So that uh, was verified through testing that PFAS at high levels was being discharged into the aquifer, and that has ceased. It's going to take a while, uh, and I don't know how long, for uh, the PFAS uh, to be gone from the ground, probably a very long time, but at least there's no more going in at mm. present yeah. at, from that source. Uh, we continue to monitor the regulation development process uh, in uh, New Hampshire, yeah. Massachusetts, <coughs> Connecticut, uh, New York, New Jersey especially. Yeah. Uh, and uh, as you're aware, uh, New Hampshire DES did propose uh, some regulations recently. And then we had regular communication with you folks, uh, the folks from Northampton and uh, the state uh, legislators. I send out an email periodically with uh, the bar graphs and with the data table. Before we switch slides, may we ask? Questions can we let them go through them? their program and then we can ask questions? Oh, okay. I thought maybe we could Thank do you. one by one. Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, 
So this, this is a, a bar graph uh, showing where we stand relative to the recently proposed standards from DES. So along the bottom, we have the eight PFAS compounds that we regularly detect. Uh, the third uh, orange bar in is a standard that's been proposed for PFOA plus PFOS. And then PFNA is a compound that where a standard has been proposed but we really don't detect that one uh, in the drinking water in Hampton. We've, we've detected it at very low levels in a couple of samples from well six, but of the thousands of tests we do, almost 99% of them are none detect for that compound. Mm. So New Hampshire has uh, proposed a, a, an MCL, a maximum contaminant level, which is an enforceable standard based on a legislation that was passed last year uh, of 38 for PFOA, and uh, they're keeping the EPA 70 level for PFOS. Uh, the EP level, EPA level of 70 for PFOA plus PFOS. Mm. And then they have uh, a standard uh, in the 80s for PFHXS, and then a sample of uh, 22 or 23 for PFNA. That's the one we don't detect. The dark blue bar is the max level of each of those PFAS compounds that we have detected in the treated water mm. in the distribution system. Uh, and you can see those are all uh, much lower than the proposed standards in New Hampshire. Mm. The uh, light blue is the average. So, for example, we monitored uh, the six distribution system points for 10 out of the 12 months in 2018. And when you take that average, you come up with those numbers. Okay, so you can see that they are much, much lower uh, than the New Hampshire proposed standards. And I think you're aware what's going on now. Uh, because EPA has not taken the lead on um, reassessing and setting standards for multiple PFAS compounds, uh, individual states are stepping up oh. and setting their own standards. So that's very unusual, but it's the situation that we have right now. Uh, the uh, states like New Jersey and New York uh, have the lowest standards that I've seen in the nearby states that I've been monitoring, and uh, New York uh, has set a standard of 10 for PFOA and 10 for PFOS. So significantly lower than the New Hampshire standards. Yeah. But you can see how our water measures up against those. So the, the blue, the light blue, the aquamarine color, much, much lower. And uh, the max level, which like in the case of PFOA, that was one uh, sample. Uh, with Mel, with the mill, with well number six at Mill Road in service, uh, was uh, I think it was 11.7. Uh, so these standards may change. These are proposed, and DES is taking a public comment on those. It's possible that they could come down, uh, uh, but this is where our water stands relative to the standards as wow. proposed today. <coughs> Okay, one more slide. So our plan for this year is to continue to minimize the use of well number six. Uh, we're gonna continue our PFAS uh, testing of the well water and the treated water. Uh, we're gonna initiate sampling and testing in these sentinel wells that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. And the purpose of that is to uh, determine if there are higher levels of PFAS than we are seeing in our wells approaching those wells. Mm. Uh, and that could lead to decisions to take those wells offline uh, if demands permit. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, Dan will talk about the co uh, continuing the PFAS treatment evaluation. We need to obtain uh, approval from DES to put well 22 in service. And again, well 22, it's a high production well, very low PFAS levels, less than five parts per trillion. Uh, and getting that in service uh, will enable us to reduce the use of the higher PFAS containing wells. Uh, 
we'll continue to monitor the regulatory process, especially here in New Hampshire, mm -hmm. and we'll continue to communicate with you all on a regular basis. Questions? Questions. Uh, just one question on this, uh, John, and then I'll ask you to go back to the first slide. Well 22, does, does Aquarian still have the test wells on McCarran Drive going down to the wells? Uh, seven and twenty-two. Yes, we do. Okay, and and is that is is are the test wells relevant to any of this? Uh, well, we're, we're planning to get a couple of sets of samples out of those just to see what's going on. Okay, um, and hold it into this whole whole could, evaluation. Could you go back to one, John? Because I had there there we go. Okay. Well, seven and well 22 are behind me. I, I have had concern about saline contamination on well 22 because it's lower down and it's uh, east, east facing and, and there is a lot of wet area down there. We haven't detected anything yet? No. No, okay. And then the, the last thing, I have communicated with our state representatives um, on the uh, perimeters of the wells, because I am still concerned, as a resident of the state of New Hampshire, the very limited perimeter around the wells. And uh, there doesn't seem to be any uh, concern at the state level, but when you have something like well 22 and well 7, where McCarran Drive goes down and water goes down with it, there is a potential cause of contamination especially in, in the wells that are below the higher areas where the roads are and so forth. So uh, if you uh, gentlemen and uh, other water companies in the state of New Hampshire could maybe do a little proactive lobbying up in Concord to get them to uh, revisit perimeters of wells so that we don't have the risk of contamination, uh, I would appreciate it. So just want to clarify. <laughs> so you're talking about source protection overall? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, thank you. Okay. Because with the 400 foot, you know, the well is pretty stupid. So. <laughs> Any other questions from the board? I do. Regina. Thank you for uh, the update mm -hmm. on PFAS levels. If we could go back to this one again. Mm -hmm. Sure. I think that was the next one. Whoops. I'll get there. So there. these orange lines represent the proposed MCL that still has to be approved, which didn't really change anything by too much mm. as to what the EPA already has at the 70. I mean, when I looked at it as a layman, mm -hmm. it always was like, well, what's the point? But I'm not really concerned about what DES is doing right now. Um, I'm concerned about what you're doing and I think it's very good because like I've stated for a while that you I think are the ones that got you know you got the testing going former representative Mindy Mesmer is here and she through her work and working on the cancer cluster commission last year with some of our other state reps I think opened up a lot of people's eyes and yeah. you know got the information out there so people can understand it but at the same time, we also have to consider this chart. Those numbers, and I have Mindy Mesmer on as an ex appointment for this very reason so that mm -hmm. she can, you're an expert and she's an expert. The way I look at it, you two, you communicate all the time and I love that. I know that uh, John Hurley and Mindy Mesmer talk and I think that's very good. And I hope that we have another, we have two state reps in the audience today. Mm -hmm because I received about an hour or so ago that Representative Rennie Cushing is actually appointed by the Speaker of the House yeah. as a House member to the Seacoast Cancer Cluster Commission. Yeah. So that That's means good. he resigned as the Hampton rep. So we'll eventually have to be looking to appoint someone to that seat. But I need to make my experiences aware to the public. And I'm gonna do it right here, right now. Mindy Mesmer, when I have questions on any of this, I make sure it goes to her. Mm -hmm. She's become yep. my liaison for this, and I would like that to continue to be. I know she works well with both state and local officials. She works well with you. But at the same time, you are our water guys. 
<laughs> and as long as you keep these numbers as low and you're continuing to monitor it and to track DES regulation, to track federal regulation, whatever may affect you. Because right now, even if DES were to lower this to what they're suggesting, that's not really going to affect Aquarian too much, right? Because your numbers are already way lower. Mm -hmm. You're actually close to the lowest, uh, the most conservative stage. So I want to point that out. And you're planning on staying on top of this without any any uh, orders from DES or the APA as you have been doing the whole entire time. And you're actually helping them you know, gather information that for whatever reason they seem not motivated enough to do. <laughs> so I appreciate that. And I just wanted to point that out that I hope in the future, <coughs> as long as I sit as a selectman, that you <coughs> and Mesmer and me can keep this going together locally to make sure that we stay on top of it and we inform the public and we don't need regulations, we don't need the state to tell us what to do. We already know what to do right here. Thank you. Yeah, we, we see our role as to uh, provide the water to know what's in the water yeah. and where there's a concern to manage those concerns. So by minimizing the use of well six, by developing new supplies to help redu further reduce the use of the most contaminated wells, that's that's what we're doing about it while the health experts figure out what's the implementation of well 22 will help you yeah but these numbers will be even lower water. when we don't have to use well six at all mm -hmm. okay thank you jim upset right yeah <clears throat> i would just like to say that um i had an interesting experience <laughs> recently and i had a liver transplant and <laughs> one of the things that uh they do is they you know they treat they teach you about um you know things that you should avoid and uh like you know uh, buffets and restaurants and stuff like that but one of the things that was most important to them was about water and i thought found that fascinating and they categorized it in three t different types one you know, the community water system like you provide, uh, also <coughs> bottled water, and well water. That, so when you go to someone's house, they said you need to ask people if they're having their water tested, mm. and really you should bring your own water wow. um, and not take a chance. So uh, to me that was fascinating, and the, so I would have thought that it would have been the bottled water that they would have thought was best. But they said, no, it's definitely the community water system because it's so well tested ordinarily um, in most communities. So I thought that was fascinating. Mm. So it's good that you all are doing a good job. It mm. helps a lot of people. And I think it's something that people that have well water ought to take into consideration to have their water tested more often than, mm. well, I don't know how often they do it, but. I never hear anyone say, oh, I had my well water tested. And uh, so mm -hmm. it was a good experience for me. Thank you. The only thing I have is, is there was some discussion here on well 7 and 22. Well 7 and 22 are not surface water wells. They're deep wells, correct? But the water comes yes. down from Woodland Road and but goes right down was, there. Carl, Carl can address yeah. that. Yeah, Carl, will you? Yep, well, well, seven, it's, it's a sand and gravel well, it's 50 or 60 feet deep, so it's, as far as wells go, it's, it's somewhat on the more shallow side. Well 22 is 220 feet deep down yeah. to where we're pulling the water from. Out of bedrock, out of, right. Well right. seven is so, old, it's one of the really old wells. But, no, Mary Louise has a good point. I mean, almost all contamination in water starts out on the surface. Oh, absolutely. For the most part, so, in fact, they'll mention it now, this year we're starting up, it's a, it's a program we do every three years. It's a state requirement um, oriented towards source protection. And we mm -hmm. actually go out, you know, everybody that lives in that aquifer protection zone is going to get some information on, you know, how to be a good steward of the stuff you use so that it doesn't contaminate the water. We'll actually do surveys of places that are potential contaminant sources. So mm -hmm. it's all, all tr partly education and partly surveying things to yep. minimize the uh, potential contamination in yep. the aquifer. Good. Anything else? 
We got a few more things if you have time. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I just wanted to again, I'm Dan Lawrence, the director of engineering uh, for Acquire. Just wanted to bring you up to speed on the Mill Road treatment analysis. Uh, as, as you may remember, we are working on right now a pilot um, comparing the benefit of granular activated carbon and ion exchange. If you recall, in 2017, we did an alternative analysis, look at possible scenarios to treat for the PFAS. And then we went forward with some bench scale testing. Um, and one of the things, and I'm gonna just change slides. Oops, Ooh. yeah, that's, that's the, where did it go, Carl? Is it two slides over? Yes. Yeah, I'm gonna skip a slide for a second. Is one of the things that when we came out of the bench scale and the alternative analysis, and this is a little dated because that was la you know, early, early last year, so some of the concentrations are a little different because we have more data now, um, was when you look at these scenarios, we were looking at, and just for comparison's sake, no treatment is, is always an alternative. Um, scenario one was just treat for well six, and the last scenario, this is just for the Mill Road well field, mm -hmm. was to treat well six, eight, eight, nine, eleven, which are all the overburden or sand and gravel wells. Wow. And one of the pieces, if you look down at the cost, and that's where I want to remind you of why we're doing what we're doing, is there's a definitely increase in capital costs from the, for the various um, alternatives from not zero, but as an additional cost to 6.1 million. But the estimated annual operating cost, the variability and how often we would have to change media, if you recall, is it was something we were really concerned about. Is it every three weeks? Is it every three months? Is it every three years? And so we've been working on the pilot um, and we had a meeting with our consultant today, and that is the pilot. Uh, we run, there's a monitoring well immediately adjacent to well six, and we pull water out from there, and those represent columns of ion exchange and or granule activated carbon, and what we're looking for. And, and we are getting better results. Um, wow. They're confirming information, and that should really help us as we think about trying to narrow down those operating costs which in the end narrows down the potential rate increase required to address the issue. So mm. that's really why we're doing what we're doing. We have chosen to extend the pilot another three months. It's not gonna cost us any more, so that's even better. Um, to get a, a little more data, uh, and when, these kind of, when you're doing pilots, the more information you have, the better. Um, so we're gonna be extending that into March. Um, just wanted to let you know that. Originally we were planning to extend it into January, but it's gone through some cold. It'll hopefully last forever, you know, mm -hmm. last the, the February cold snap I'm sure we'll get. Um, but um, we're looking forward to those results. Mm. And just a few final updates. Uh, did want to mention that we've got some treatment upgrades in the works, uh, a consolidated plan out at Mill Road, mm -hmm. and then one also for the combined flow of well 7 and 22. Mm -hmm. uh, we are working on the groundwater withdrawal permit for well 22 <coughs> got the draft application just last week it's two inches thick which is why it's a little bit behind schedule uh, but we'll be proceeding with that over the next uh, couple of months it's still our hope that uh, we can use that for production this summer although one thing we've got to step back and take a look at is you, you know we've got PFAS regs going on we also have new regs and arsenic coming and the uh, maximum contaminant is dropping from 10 down to 5 so we have some wells with some trace levels well, five is a trace level, so we need to get some more data out of well 22 to see exactly where that stands before you know, we go forward with putting that into, uh, into production. And Dan, if you go to the next one, please. As I mentioned, our big main replacement project uh, for this year is replacing the pipe that cuts across the marsh uh, down along Route 101. Um, a lot of the same environment that the town has dealt with with your sewer project and mm -hmm. you well know the expense yeah. of having to deal with leaks out there so we're you know looking at that and thinking we need to do something uh, sooner rather than later so uh, basically come up Tide Mill Road come across 101 come down the opposite side of the town's sewer project mm -hmm. to Glade Path and then can connect back into the system so um, that's on the books, and I think I got one more slide. Just to, yeah, our environmental champions for the years coming up. Chance to uh, call out those people and organizations that really demonstrate excellence in promoting our natural resources. Um, so stay tuned. We'll be looking for nominations soon, and we've got our event time for May 9th of this the spring. So okay, May Louise. Gentlemen, I want to make a personal plea. And you and I have known each other a long time, Carl. Please, when you're doing projects, notify manager 
and give an idea of what impact might take place on the community. I found the dirty water coming out of my sink, what, the, the summer, and I called Fred and said, what on earth is going on? And Fred finds out everything. So he said, just run the water for 15 minutes. It did clear, but it was an unusual thing. I don't usually see dirty water coming out of my, my faucets. But this recent incident, and I'm gonna tell you, I was not happy. I was not happy, and you know that. I have worked with the water company in Hampton since Hampton Water Works. When you came on board, you came into town, moved in. I served on the uh, Aquarian Customer Advisory Council, except when I was a selectman, then I would step down. I think I have been uh, somewhat helpful to you folks over the years. I don't ever want another incident like what happened with that water pressure. When you know you are working on, and in that case, I guess you were working on well 22, where there's a possibility of either dirt contamination or what, I never saw anything like that air coming out of my faucet. I thought it was gonna break the faucet out and hit the ceiling. That is a terrifying sight to see that air coming out of your pipe. And what I, you, you need to call, you need to notify Fred, please send him an email or something that you're going to be working. Nothing may happen, but you're gonna be working on such and such a location in case something happens, uh, then we'll have an idea what's going on. And uh, I suggest that at least once a year, when you mail out bills, put in like a small business card, giving the customers an emergency number to call. I called the police department, and that dispatcher was wonderful. I explained that I had an, an awful problem, and she was so good, she located your technician and who called me back about 10 minutes later. Call, tell people that to call, and I, I don't think you're gonna have floods of them, but the people can call the Hampton Police Department, but the police department needs to know from you if there may be a problem somewhere along the line. Now, your technician was very nice. Um, he told me when he called me from Seabrook that he'd need an outside line to bleed the air from the system. So I said, okay, I have an outside faucet right next to the driveway. I went down in the cellar, I had shut off the outside water faucets at the end of September. But I went down and I opened up the outside faucet and when I was, I had to go to a planning board meeting that night. So I backed down my driveway and the technician was there, he did come. I did have calls from other residents on Little River Road who were seeing the same problem. And after that I had calls from people all the way down High Street as far as Dunbegin Woods who had some air in their system. But the technician was there, and as I backed out, the faucet was practically shaking itself off the side of the house. I don't know how much water was used when you cleared that line, but when I got home, the water was all the way down the driveway, all the way up to the barn. I don't know how many gallons were used. I went in the house, and I had left the cellar light on so I wouldn't forget the faucet downstairs, got downstairs, secured the faucet again, and the floor was full of water. My house was built in 1903. The faucet's up close to the house. I never use the outdoor faucets unless they're hooked up to the hose, but they weren't hooked up to the hose then. It would have been probably pretty stupid if it was. But my cellar floor is all full of water because it leaks through the stone foundation. If you don't think I was cross, I'm telling you now. Okay, I was mad. So. so we need, just give us a heads up. That's all. Give us a heads up and tell us. We're, we're doing pipes at such and such a location. There might be a problem. They may never be. In fact, you had a nice technician come home, come to my home last fall to replace the water meter because it was 10 okay, years old. Mary Louise, Didn't can you I make your point, Wait a please? Minute. I called you up. And I congratulated you on having such a nice employee, and he was. He was a very, very nice person. 
So I don't usually holler at you, but I'm telling you, we better have a little more heads up for the residents. Let the manager know what's going on. If there's a problem, forget it. If there's no problem, forget it. If there is a problem, please notify people. Thank please. you. Please. And Regina. don't forget that little card at least once a year with an emergency number on it. Regina? Yeah, I have a couple questions. I meant to ask uh, John Hurley. He, mm. I know that website that was uh, a lot of us didn't know, like, didn't necessarily like the way it was stated on there. I know uh, Mindy Mesmer had some qualms with it. It was pretty much saying that Coakley had nothing to do mm -hmm. with uh, uh, contamination. Yeah. Could you explain yeah. what the company's done with that? Yes, yeah, so the original statements uh, were put up there because some people were saying that uh, Coakley was definitively uh, causing the contamination in the mill road well. Mm -hmm. So we were saying, uh, based on the uh, advice of our expert consultant, we were saying no, they're not. And as the, as the uh, discussion continued over the months, uh, it was pointed out that there, there really isn't conclusive evidence either way. And so we softened the statement uh, to say that, you know, more study is needed. At this point in time, uh, there is not any evidence that I'm aware of and that our consultant is aware of that says, you know, here's proof that Coakley is contaminating uh, any of our wells. Uh, so we, we reworded the statement uh, because more testing is going to be done and we will see what the, the outcome of that testing is. Thank you. And I have one, actually one for each of them. Now the next <laughs> one's for Carl. Um, well 22, compared to well 6, what is the, like forget about the PFAS for a minute, what is the capacity of that well compared to, like what will that well capacity do? It's about three times yeah. the capacity yeah. in terms of just pr producing water compared to six. So for all this growth we have happening that's most likely to continue, that is something that sub substantially could assist our water supply. Well, we were talking upstairs about all the growth that the town's experiencing. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's probably still going to continue It'll to It'll certainly help us meet future demands for quite mm -hmm. some time, assuming we get it permitted for the full amount. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. And the last question I have is for um, Dan. We were talking upstairs about the 101 main replacement, how you have to go through a similar type of uh, procedure, I guess you call it, that we had to go through for our mosh pipes. And you have to work with those same state agencies and do those same type of what we have to do to get all our permitting and things like that. Do you foresee any problems going forward? We just, I'm saying this now because we have our two of our state reps here. We have Patricia Bushway and we also have Mike Edgar. So I know there was a little uncertainty upstairs, <laughs> and I think that maybe now's the time to uh, state it on camera what we have. Yeah, so we were, um, uh, as Carl discussed, we're planning to replace our uh, water main, take it out of the tidal marsh, and, and put it in a place we can uh, work on it, which is the edge of Route 101. Uh, we have prepared um, design plans and submitted permit applications. Um, we're getting ready to submit to New Hampshire DOT um, for an access permit. Um, those, you know, and th those are these are challenging areas, as we all know, both from a traffic point of view. Uh, we had that conversation. We we have met um, Fred, and we had a meeting with um, the town's consultant, our consultant, and New Hampshire DOT early on mm -hmm. as um, the town is really ahead of us in terms of getting their sewer, your sewer project complete um, so you're at least underway and we wanted to make sure and coordinate with that um, a lot of the work is, is similar um, you know but um, in the area where um, the town's gonna basically put the pipes up on a pipe bridge we're gonna be directional drilling around the bridge so a little difference there but um, for the most part so we, you know we, we want to build that this year uh, that's our plan so that Basically, the town can build the sewer, we can build the water, then the New Hampshire DOT has plans to re restore the roadway, and that would be the proper sequence. So is there any damage to the roadway for any reason for them, those projects? It doesn't get on a brand new roadway. It's yeah. after the fact. So that is a tight schedule to do all that for one year, but I think it's very doable um, with all permits in place for everybody. And so. that water supplies the water to Hampton Beach. Yes, that's a Hampton Beach, uh, and uh, we know you had an, an issue out there on the sewer, and no offense, but we don't want to do that as well. We'd prefer not to have to do that, so. It's one of 
two transmission mains to the beach and it handles probably two thirds of the summer demand. Yeah. So that's pretty important. So from a fire protection standpoint, yeah. it's very critical. So why it's a critical main, so that's why we're addressing the issue. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Jim? Uh, thank you guys. Rick? Thank you for your report. You're welcome. Kyle, you know what I'm gonna say. <laughs> Don't forget West of 95. I won't, but here's what I'm gonna say. As a resident, from your remarks earlier, I've lived in four states, paid taxes in four states. I, I think I get a lot of value out of the property taxes I pay here in Hampton. That's good to hear. So. Absolutely. So, thank you very much, John. You're welcome. Appreciate thank it. you. Let's just keep us up to date. Please, please. <clears throat> Our next one is Mindy Messer. Water issues. Mindy's name is spelled incorrectly. Good evening, Mindy. It's nice to see you. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here. So, uh, Rick, I just wanted to follow up on something you said. 46% of the people in New Hampshire get their water from their own wells, and that's a very unregulated set of uh, water supply to the state, so that's, that's a really good recommendation they made to you. Um, one of the things that uh, m another one of my bill, which is not an issue here in Hampton, uh, is that one of my bills passed um, the house that is going to create a much stricter standard for arsenic too. And I mention that because we have a very high rate of bladder cancer in the state of New Hampshire, 37 percent higher than any other state in the, in the nation. So that bill is going to result in having the arsenic. Um, and so I tell you that because it, in private wells across the state, that's a very big problem in various areas. So. Um, and as you may have know, may know, most of the work I've done in the State House um, has to do with reducing the rate of cancer because not only do we have the highest rate of bladder cancer, but we also have the highest rate of breast, um, esophageal, and um, what was the other one? <laughs> I just forgot what I was saying. Uh, cancer in the state of New Hampshire. So um, most of my work is, is centered around that. We also have the pediatric cancer cluster here on the seacoast. Yeah. That's where this work has started for me. So. Um, a lot of the work I've done has to do with looking at the PFAS standard. Um, we just had a two and a half an hour, hour meeting in Merrimack on this um, issue with the state of New Hampshire DES, uh, went going through all of their calculations that resulted in the numbers that were presented by Aquarian. And we have a lot of problems with those numbers. It basically didn't come off of EPA's number much. Uh, there is one part of the calculation that if uh, they said they used professional judgment to select the number, and if they had done it like New Jersey did, it would result in a threefold lower standard for PFO and it, just one of those chemicals. And my concern is uh, that there's only two of the chemicals currently being regulated. We're proposing that four be regulated um, out of like the 5,000 PFAS chemicals there are. Um, and only a small segment of those we're testing for, I think about 26 now. So um, the problem with these chemicals is they accumulate in your body. Mm -hmm. And they stay there for a really long time in your body. Even if you stop taking in any of those chemicals into your body, they'll be there for a really long time. So that's my concern, especially when we talk about young children, uh, prenatal exposure and early childhood life exposure. So uh, you know there are some of the chemicals showing up in your water that are not being regulated. Uh, and those numbers result in about, I think you said 48 or 50 parts per trillion total PFAS when uh, the maximum is put in there. So I have, I have issues with that because I would like to be protective of these young children looking at the most protective standards when we only regulate a small set of them uh, so that we're we take precautions rather than saying, well, we're below 70 so we're okay. So that's kind of where all my work is going toward. Um, that public comment process will get underway starting in March and then I believe the, uh, the rules will be final unless there's some delays by the fall will probably go to gel car in the state. So there's a bit of a process going on. Mm -hmm. We um, are planning to, uh, a group of us and with Conservation Law Foundation, we've been involved in really inputting into that process and we'll continue to do that. Did you have a question? Lindy, do you ha are you privy to the information that uh, John Hurley he just showed? Do you get the reports from Aquarian? I think I do. See the PFAS yeah. testing? Yeah. Yeah, so I hope that helps a little it, bit. It does, but I still I still have concerns about when those numbers are higher. Yeah. And exactly, you know, you don't sample real time all the time, so there's probably fluctuations in between. Okay. So I do have questions. I do have concerns about having those kinds of levels 
um, especially when you get close to other states' levels. Um, mm -hmm. So one of the most, like John said, um, you know, New York and New Jersey are some of the most, most protective states right now. Mm -hmm. Other states have even gotten a bit, proposing to go a bit lower. So mm -hmm. um, when you get down to the levels that other states say is not safe, I would prefer to be below those numbers right now. But, um, you know, EPA is not taking any action with pretty much anything right now. So, mm -hmm. uh, and, and they go through these things one by one by one, these chemicals, to see what the health standards are. And it takes a really long time to get health information done, you know, these studies take three years minimum mm. to do once they, you know, are done and, uh, and reported. So, you know, we're looking at a very long time period to find out how these 5,000 chemicals should be regulated. So. Mindy, are you also paying attention at the state level to the radii of the wells and whether there's a, an even ground or sloping ground near wells? for potential contamination from fertilizers, oil in the driveway, salt in yeah, the Yeah, so I actually was just looking at some of the other states that have some very comprehensive packages mm -hmm. that they're proposing um, to protect source water like you're talking mm -hmm. about. So I have been starting con discussions with people about doing that very same thing here in New Hampshire. So I do share your concerns about that. I appreciate it. Um, so a group of us led by Conservation Law Foundation submitted a petition which unfortunately just Friday was rejected <coughs> by the state, which got to this issue about the one by one assessment <coughs> of these chemicals, which was going to take a treatment based standard, which was similar to what John was talking about, saying we already know we have a technology we can get all these chemicals out with um, the, um, the ion exchange and then the, the granular activated carbon. I'm on the Re Restoration Advisory Board at Pease, and that system uh, we're watching is, is very effective at getting all these chemicals out. So that petition was submitted uh, to come up with a standard that if you have these chemicals above a certain threshold, that you would then treat them and they'd all be gone. Um, unfortunately, they rejected that, saying they're waiting on EPA to come up with a step-by-step -step analysis of each of the chemicals. So hmm. that is not, not very help. Um, we're not happy about Wait. that. Could I ask a question on that? Who's saying that? Uh, State in Hampshire rejected the Department Scott. of Environmental Services. Yep, they rejected it with a one-page letter last Friday, saying we're Good. just going to wait on. Because EPA. I've gone to conferences all over New England, and they said the more you take together, now these are private companies, these are other state agencies. Yep. The more you look at together, out of the four or five thousand chemicals that yep. we know exist right now, yep. the better off you are at. Right containing them and figuring out, in essence, how to get rid of them. But we, like, we have good technology now that we know is very effective at removing them. But I would say that what DES said is, I'm not sure where they came up. <laughs> I mean, I know I'm a layperson, but I've talked to several people, and I believe I've kept you fairly informed of what I found out, and that that's an awful statement to hear. And I also like to, uh, well, I'll let you continue, and then I'll... Yeah. Say what I want to say after. It's conquered after all, Regina. <laughs> so, like I said, if, if we are successful in pointing out that this one professional judgment was not um, appropriate, which I think we will be or could be, that would result in a threefold lower standard than what we're current uh, for PFO in, a, in, in a, of itself um, than we current see, currently see from them. Um, the other thing, uh, so there are a couple of bills. One is a drinking water commission bill, which was the drinking water commission that had been. Uh, looking at protecting the drinking water of the seacoast, that timed out, and so there's a bill in uh, that Rennie Cushing brought back in to reestablish that commission, which is a really important commission, and I would hope that this, um, this um, Hampton would support that again. Um, many of the legislators are on that commission. Uh, Mike Edgar was a big part of that commission too, and Regina was on that commission, and uh, it's a very important forward-looking if they do a good job of forward-looking um, protection of our water in the state of New Hampshire, on, on the seacoast. Um, and the other issue that you know I'm involved with is Coakley Landfill. The, now the meetings are public uh, due to the lawsuit that we were successful in bringing to Superior Court. The next meeting is this Wednesday at 2.30 at the City Hall uh, at the library. Um, I try to encourage as many people to show up there to see what's going on, to see what the money's being spent on. $17 million has been spent on the Coakley Landfill and we don't have an active remedial system. We just have a cap on top of it. Um, and recently, because of a reduction in a 1,4-dioxane standard, which is a different chemical, two private wells in Greenland, the golf course, the Breakfast Hill Golf Course, and another private home uh, were shut down. Their water supplies and remedial systems were put in. The state definitively said it was Coakley Landfill that caused those wow. exceedances. So there are toxins migrating off that site. 
And it's only a matter of time, in my opinion, when we come up with new standards for PFAS and other things that would trigger something to happen that um, the remedial system should get installed. And there's the bills back in again that I had in last session, uh, Rennie Cushing brought, in, brought back in uh, uh, to s implement to some kind of remedial system for the Coakley landfill. Um, I think that is about it for that. I am concerned, I did hear, and I have talked to John about this, um, and there was part of the discussion about um, what has been happening with MW6. I realize, um, I agree that it's not entirely from Coakley, it could be from the car wash, but there are several wells up next to on uh, well 14 and well 16 in particular that I'm concerned they're hydraulically upgradient from that car wash, so there must be another source of those low levels of PFAS compounds, and I think that that, and plus the historic um, detection in the uh, Lafayette Terrace area of PFAS, and then there's some wood knoll, there's a couple of, um, so it, certainly PFAS is migrating this way from Coakley. Whether or not it's the, it's the cause of MW6 or a contributor is, is one of my questions. So, so Hampton should be monitoring the Coakley landfill situation. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, so a couple things. Um, Coakley landfill. We, I know the issue in the beginning was they were, you know, they're claiming that, oh, it's definitely not affecting the Hampton Aquarian Wells. And we really wanted to get them to set up monitoring wells to the south and east, I believe. Mm. Has there any been any? Um, actually, uh, so the last Cancer Cluster Commission meeting that we had, um, they did, there was a letter that um, the commission received that day that said that yes, now they agree that radial flow occurs. So flow from Coakley Landfill goes off in all directions. And right. they had been implementing on the site itself uh, an investigation to the south um, of several wells. They were looking at what wells exist. They were going to do some testing of those wells on the south side between Coakley Landfill and Hampton. And I know that work is ongoing. Mm. Okay. And now I have a, I want to bring up a couple things about some past bills that came from you. Um, one, the gut food was Senate Bill 309. Right. That's, that was the, that's the one that's responsible for this rulemaking that's going on right now. And that's in process mm -hmm. of happening. Yep. And then there was another bill, 1100 something. It was a, it was a House bill. I don't know the number. 1101. That yeah. that's what actually made through and passed, right? Both of them did. And oh. but 1101 was a combination of other bills that you had right. previously submitted and were denied. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So I just want the public to be oh, aware yeah. of that. Yeah. And also, I hope going forward. Now I just received earlier today. I mentioned it before that. Uh, representative Cushing is not going able to be a Hampton representative to the Cancer yeah. Cluster Commission because he's appointed as a House member now to that commission. Mm -hmm. So that means Hampton's going to be looking to appoint a rep. Um, I'm not sure Mike Edgar's here. He was on it before. If he was, he would probably take a rep seat as well. Uh, uh, not available. Well, I think, I mean, I would like to see Mindy Mesmer involved, whether, I don't know what, but I would mm -hmm. also like to run it by, I know that Patricia Bourgeois was not aware of the vacancy, so I would like to run it by our Hampton reps, yeah. but I'm not sure what seats are available on the commission, but perhaps the board could consider, after we discuss it with our local reps, if we could perhaps suggest uh, Mesmer for at least an at-large appointment. I think she brings a lot to the table. I think she's willing to do it. And it would make me very nervous if she wasn't involved in the process just because she is, you know, the circumstance that she's no longer a state rep right now. Yeah. I like to make sure that that does not exclude her from ongoing investigations. And I talked to the senator about it a couple of weeks ago, Senator Sherman, and he said that he thinks it's very important that you're involved as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I really like to see that happen. Yeah. I just want to let the board know. Jim? No. Rick? No, thank you. I enjoyed thank your you. report. Thank you. All right. Oh, one quick question. One more. As far as aquarium, do you think that they are justly doing what is in their ability to do as I far as so. monitoring uh, this PFAS? You know, I, like I said, though, I'm concerned about the other unregulated PFAS chemicals that are in there. And I, I'm, I'm glad that they're blending them down to a level. You know, I, I'm concerned about blending in general, but, um, you know, I think. The thing, about, the thing about these chemicals, I think John and I were talking about this the other, the other day, how can we make people feel better about the water? Well, the thing is that, you know, a year and a half ago, 
the state told us 600 parts per trillion was okay. And then on May 31st, it was 70 parts per trillion. And other states are saying in the tens. So, you know, when people see those kinds of movements in the standards on a, over a pretty short period of time, it makes people wonder what really is safe. So when you look at, you know, which ones are we regulating? We're only regulating two right now. And there's 5,000 of them, and there's like 10 or t whatever in your water. So that's where um, I think some of the questions come. And I would prefer to be very proactive and be very, you know, mm -hmm. act with a lot of precaution. Can I just say something? Sure. Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to thank you again, Mindy, for all your efforts thank and you. the, the brave effort to get the Coakley Landfill Group subject to the right to know law. You and Representative Edgar and and uh, four others, the brave six. <laughs> and uh, we thank you. And we, of course, joined you in that successful effort, uh, groundbreaking thank you. throughout the country. Yes. And uh, your continued involvement in this field will be critical. I know mm -hmm. you've been at all the PFAS meetings that I've attended, the uh, ones, uh, the major uh, program that was put on in, in Exeter by the EPA, uh, revealing the shocking effects that these chemicals can mm -hmm. have on people uh, that remain in their bloodstream for a long period of time. So critical that your involvement remain, and, and we hope you can. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have is the town manager's report. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, work does continue on the installation of piping on Church Street for the new sewer force main. Residents are advised to seek alternate routes due to the ongoing construction in the street that may hold up traffic at times. Please watch for construction workers and police officers in the roadway. Please mark your calendars for the upcoming deliberative session of the annual town meeting that will be held on February 2nd, 2019, beginning at 8.30 p.m. at the Winnicott High School. Christmas tree collections have been ongoing for the last week or so <coughs> uh, with your regular trash collection. If you have any questions with regards to that and then the continuance of it, Please call the Public Works Department and for any specific questions or problems you are having. The Hampton Harbor Bridge Project will be holding a public information meeting at the Seabrook Recreation Center on January 30th at 7 p.m. Inclement weather date is February 6th. That's a very important meeting. The consultant is getting ready to make up some um, reports and so forth for the state DOT. Uh, we have been notified through the efforts of uh, our deputy town manager and others uh, that the state, or the, excuse me, FEMA has approved uh, a final obligation amount of $67,657.71 for the storms that we experienced earlier last year. Uh, they are still working. Uh, on the obligation for the replacement of the sewer line that was damaged during one of our storm periods. Mm -hmm. So that, that's something that uh, we're working on actively. Uh, it's important that we continue to do that. And we have, uh, we have some uh, petitions before the state DOT and DES uh, with regards to that matter. Um, I did on behalf of uh, the town and the board today send a letter to all of our representatives got some pretty fast answers from some of them, as a matter of fact, uh, with regards to, to House Bill number 352, uh, asking all of our representatives to uh, please attend the hearing and sign their support on that bill. The hearing is going to be on Thursday, January 17th at 1.15 p.m. in room 210 of the LLB in Concord. Uh, that particular bill uh, will fund the outstanding uh, obligation uh, that's been held up by the state for 70 wastewater projects since 2014. The town of Hampton is listed as eligible for $2,869,921. The total of the eligi eligibility list is $93,158,264 for the 70 individual mis uh, municipalities in the state. Your vote, uh, their vote, uh, is urgently needed by the residents of Hampton who have already been forced to pay the state's costs uh, and will be reimbursed uh, if the bill is passed. State total funding is $3,652,347 in fiscal year 2020 and $3,781,24 in 2021. So they have all pretty much pledged their assistance. Um, in order to get that bill through the, uh, the legislature, 
so that we will be reimbursed for our prior obligations that the state is not funded for one reason or another in their appropriation bills since uh, 2014. Uh, I just want to tell everybody that your representatives and everybody involved in this has sent a real quick response saying that they'll support this and provide that uh, support the bill and testify on it. Uh, I have been asked and with the board's permission I will in fact write a letter for the board's support to the committee which will be hand carried by uh, our representatives to Concord for the day of the hearing. Need that's a motion. your opinion. Need a motion? Uh, sure. Yes, that'd be I'll fine. I'll make a motion. To Second. That. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. That's that it. it. That's it. Questions on the report? <laughs> um, I chuckled at the copy that we received showing the <coughs> red listed bridges sort of in the thousands <laughs> across the state. I, uh, I don't think anything is going to happen very fast <laughs> on the bridge, but we can always have hope. But that was almost obscene, seeing that, all the red listed. Well, there, there are a couple. I guess you're uh, being polite. Yeah, uh, there are a couple, and we happen to be the proud owners of number one red listed bridge. Oh, wonderful. So maybe sometime in the next century we may get some. Um, Fred, let's see. The uh, thank you very much. We appreciate. I appreciate the uh, notice on the uh, from assessing from Ed Tinker uh, on the uh, report that had one discrepancy. Yeah, and they'll they'll and they'll do something about that report. I did notice when I reviewed uh, the state's criteria that. Um, they do require three years worth of information in order to do their report. So the information should have been on there, but it should have been something else added to. And okay. they're going to correct that. So can we withdraw? I don't think you want to withdraw it because they, if you do that, then they're not going to be able to do the equalization study, which will hold up our funds from the state. So we can't replace it with the we'll new? We'll just replace it with a new, a new with form. With the new information. Yeah, with the new information. Because I really am yeah. not happy about signing something that doesn't include the correct information. So no. uh, I just, uh, you know, I, I don't have a problem. We, we've been updated, and I yeah. thank you for that. Do, do we get that today? Um, it's in your. Oh, okay. All it's right. It's, it's, it's in your file. Right, so yeah, <laughs> all right. Yeah. And I thought I had, oh, and <clears throat> please. I really, really, really would like from Wright Pierce a description of the industrial surcharge fee at some point in time. I think that would be very nice and it would make me happy. At the moment they are before the uh, DES and the Federal Regulatory Agency to get permission to in fact assess those charges. We have prepared the sewer charge, as you know, mm -hmm. and the sewer re regulations, which are now being reviewed by DES as well. They have to approve those before we could formally uh, assign them uh, and, and vote on them. Uh, so um, we're hoping that by the end of the month we'll have all that information okay. and everything will be there intact. Because the right Pierce proceed. report that we got six months ago or eight months ago, whenever it was, did reference that and reference other towns that are actually that have actually implemented the industrial surcharge well, fee. We're not able to do that yet because the federal government and the state government have not approved it. Isn't that nice? I love it when they. Well. And I have one more small thing for you that I'm going to ask. Um, I would like this board to sit down sometime before April 1st with DOT state and state representatives in the town of Hampton on channel 22 to do a discussion of either a joint operations plan which seems to have fallen by the wayside or have at least a significant discussion with the state of New Hampshire on their waste in the summer season. I think we need to address, that's overwhelming the Public Works Department and I think we need to sit down and have a civilized conversation with the Regina. state. On that note that Mary Louise just made, I agree. I think we need to not procrastinate on this any longer. Yep. Um, but before we do anything with outside of Hampton, I think we need the board 
to have a conversation with Attorney Gerald as to where he stands as far as all this 91A that we've requested, per recommended by the judge to do, and then determine where we stand in everything right. before we talk to anyone. Yep. And I think that before we talk to the entire board, I think probably some type of a, you know, I was talking to uh, Attorney Sullivan, uh, Attorney Sullivan, Tom, Deputy Manager Sullivan this afternoon, and I have told the board last week that I had a couple of conversations with the senator who's very, very positive and thinks that we can sit down and talk all this through. But I think we really should try to do it because we need to have elected officials and management sit down together, figure out what both sides want, what is actually possible, and then we need to bring it back to both sides to discuss. It's the only way it's going to get done. Okay. And they're, they're, they're afraid that people are going to be rude to them, right. get off it and pay attention. Rusty. Yes. Correct. Right. I, after hearing Regina mention that she did uh, meet with him several times, which basically I feel that this is something that should be done through the board. Um, I called uh, Tom Sherman and he does have some ideas that he would like to uh, work with, I believe he said state parks. And he has uh, been a part of, a hus I believe, a hospital dismantling or something like that, mm. where he, you know, there were, it seemed like there was no answer. And he has some ideas okay. to, to get all sides talking. And he has a responsibility to the town mm -hmm. and to the state. Right. And he would like to have a small group of people, meaning two selectmen, um, the town manager, and the representative from the state and himself, and he would like to present what his ideas are. Okay. In and, public? Uh, uh, I don't believe in public. Um, and we seem to be going round and round. I think we should give him a, uh, a chance. I've been supportive of having a meeting before, and maybe this meeting would lead to a meeting in public. You know, that would be the hope. And uh, I told him that, that definitely there would need to be two selectmen, um, you know, representing the town. This is something that needs to be done in public that we would even yep. agree to have Good. this meeting. And I feel that I would like to be one of the representatives, um, having been on the Hampton Beach Area Commission for 10 years, mm -hmm. where I've worked and I understand all of the problems mm -hmm. um, with the state park and the basic problems at the beach in general. And I think I've been pretty successful working with Nancy mm -hmm. Stiles and members of the Hampton Beach Area Commission Good. to, uh, we've had a big success changing the way the parking situation was going to be down there. And I think the biggest part of the success was working with the public. So, um, you know, Senator Sherman would like to uh, set up this meeting. I told him I would get in touch with him after bringing it forward here tonight. Yep. I feel that uh, if we have one meet, you know, if there's more than one meeting, we should alternate, yep. uh, alternate the selectman's representative. But I would like to be one of the ones to start it so that I can bring forth some of the yeah. experience that I've had. Mr. Okay. Chairman. Yep. Yeah, I'd like to, like to be the other one since I can yeah. bring forward some That's of the personal experience I have that yeah. is excludes from Hampton Beach Area Commission from the day-to-day -day yeah. operations of Hampton yeah. Beach. That's well, a good I live there, so I understand. Well, I, think, I think we all have a, a vested interest in what goes on at the yeah. beach. I think we totally. All right. Make a decision as a group on who's going to be on, yep. the, yeah. right. yep. on, on the committee. So can we put that off till next meeting so people can think about it a little yep. bit? I mean, we'll I put that off till the next meeting. And uh, we'll, we'll I'll get in touch with uh, Senator Sherman tonight and let him know that. OK. Um, basically, we do have an election coming up. We want to make sure that we are representative representative by whoever is mm -hmm. sitting here at the Board of Select. All right. 
Just, just one quick follow-up. I represent the town of Hampton. That's who I represent. Well, you're up for re-election, so. Yeah, I know, win. exactly. I'm well aware. Okay. Thanks. Okay, just one quick follow-up. The every other state park in the state of New Hampshire. Does this which, have anything to do with the yes, town manager's it does. report? No. <laughs> it's, it has That's to what do we're with talking about, the town manager's report. Right, and we were just talking about this uh, predicament with the state. I have brought this up under the town manager's report. Um, and we all did it all the time in prior years. Yeah, a lot of stuff but, got done in prior time, and that's what we're paying yes, for now. Well, but at the, was this stuff regarding the beach? No other state park in the state of New Hampshire has the municipality take care of the park's waste. What None what of order them. Order we, we I'm not we're through. Gonna wait till the we're going to wait till we're, we're I'm next week to get to talk. I'm not right. through yet. Well, and, I don't want to conti and I don't want to continue to we see. Are, we are on. Point of order. And no, I are. don't want to. We are on the town manager's report. Yes. We have a question on his report. I brought this business. up under his report. And so and it's, we've done. And then we've gone on to other people. And so, Jim, do you have anything? I, I agree with the meeting on, with uh, Senator Sherman. I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea to get all the information on, from um, mm. yeah, the know. attorney before the attorney, before we start discussing it and rehashing what we've been through a hundred million times. And I did intend to bring it up under all business. Okay. So, <laughs> anything else on the town manager's report? Seeing none. And by the way, uh, this is all listed I, under old business in my Then that's agenda. when you should bring it up. Well, that's when I did bring it up. No, we are still talking to the town manager's report. Well, You're selected. So. You can do whatever you want, whenever you want. We're all equal. Whether everyone that's likes right. that or not, we're all equal. And we will go how we've run this meeting in the past. Well, so, I have no the Hampton River Bridge business. Project, Fred. There's always we talked about We didn't have any this year. We, talked we never established them. Well, we didn't talked understand about them because everybody else did. We talked yeah. about the uh, the Hampton River Bridge last our last meeting, <laughs> no and it joke. was talked about the uh, the uh, taking of property and stuff, and I and we we said we'd bring that back this week. The proposal that the state has is only one of several proposals, <laughs> and that is to either build a forty foot high bridge or a fifty foot high bridge. Those yeah. are the general concepts. Um, the 40-foot high bridge uh, without building gigantic reinforced concrete walls yeah. uh, on the bridge itself as it goes up on the uh, Sun Valley side yeah. will take down four buildings in Hampton and will take down two buildings in Seabrook yeah. plus the interconnecting road that goes from Eisenhower down onto Portsmouth. Yeah. That road will disappear as well. Um, and the fill, although it was said in the newspaper that the fill would, would not touch those buildings, the fill diagrams that they showed to us at the meeting went all the way down to Portsmouth Avenue. Mm -hmm. So those buildings won't be there. Yeah. Uh, now, if they put some other type, and this is moving the, the roadway itself as far west in the layout of state land as they can get yeah. Route 1A. Um, they have a problem going west because there are 15, <laughs> approximately 15. I, I believe I counted 15 on the on the uh, data sheet. Um, either plants or animals that are endangered yeah. over in that dune area, yeah. and uh, they can't dispense with those without special permission from various agencies and <laughs> government agencies and so forth. So um, they moving it as far west as they can it will still do that damage if the bridge is that high. Mm -hmm. To give you an idea where 40 feet is, if you look at the control tower that's there now as they explained it to us and as I remember it, mm -hmm. you would be above the top of the control tower that's there now for the bridge surface. Mm -hmm. Especially there, if there's no dredging. Yeah. It would be, well, they still have to dredge because it doesn't make any difference how high you go. Right. You still got to have a channel underneath right. it. Um, the bridge itself would not be an opening bridge. There would be no cantilever to it Thank at all. God. You would have to go through yeah. uh, on a boat uh, without the bridge opening. So you only have a height of a certain height of the boat. Mm -hmm. That would take almost all the boats that are in the harbor now without difficulty on the 40-foot yeah. to rise of the bridge. 
the 50 foot would take them all in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's the consensus of this board, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, is that um, uh, we're open to all, all the uh, issues or all the options they have, but we don't want to see any property taken. Well, property taken would be by eminent domain. There are ways around taking the property, but it increases the cost of the bridge exponentially. Mm -hmm. I would like to say there are other people, though, Fred, that do believe that they don't have to take the buildings. Well, so if they're going to build a bridge the way they showed it to us at the meeting, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they're yeah. going to have to take the buildings yeah. down. Well, I talked to some of the people, and some of the people are under the impression that it's going to be built toward the west mm -hmm. and that it's going to come out over to uh, where the state pier is and that it might have to take part of that. Well, so, they, sh they showed us the diagrams of how far west they could move yeah, it. Yeah. And with those diagrams that they showed us, those buildings are gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, if they've come up with another plan, they haven't showed it to the study committee. Yeah, it, maybe that's the case. Um, but there, I've heard other people say that they don't feel that the buildings have to be taken. Well, I don't want them taken. I, mean, yeah. that's, I don't think they need to be taken at all. And it, if they are taken, I would like to see them put a toll on it and pay us for what we're going to um, lose. Well, my suggestion would be if the buildings have to be taken because of the design of the bridge, they change the design, yeah. they put a concrete abutment uh, or a wall that yeah. will hold that material back and put yeah. a sound barrier on top mm -hmm. because those that, at that height, the roadway will be above the top of those houses if they stay there. Yeah. So they need to have some sort of a sound barrier there to, to allow people to live there with some sanity. Well, I know this is just in the planning stages, so oh, yes. I still think it's the consensus of the board that we don't want to see property taken. And if I'm wrong, let me know. I, agree, yeah. I, I don't want to see any property taken. I want to see them come back and with some other plans. Uh, <laughs> so they don't have to disrupt those problems. Sounds like they're going to have plenty of time. So, yeah. yeah so, <laughs> at the rate they're doing. the consensus yeah. of this board? Yes. Um, okay. They've got yeah. some time to get I just have something else that I wanted to bring up before we talk about the warrants that people have been huffing and puffing about. If it's okay under old business. Well, we're not, we're still, I was still doing the town manager's report because oh, I brought I that up under the bridge. <sighs> so we're in. Mary Louise, would yes, you just I'm kind just, of. I just want to say well, the commentary you have during everybody's speaking is getting very old. I want so. to just bring up two things on, regarding the bridge. I don't ever want to hear anybody say bascule again. That stupid bridge that's there oh, now is, is disgusting. But if you're talking about tolls and you have been, that's a state, that's going to be a state bridge coming off a state highway. So if there are any tolls, the it's money's going to go state. to the state. Mr. Okay. Mr. Yes. Can I just very quickly? There are engineers working on it. You, we're going to have to have the bridge. It's going to have to be repaired. There are people in the harbor who have to make money in a living with yeah. boats that have yes. to go under the bridge. Right. Yes. So whether it's a Baskill bridge or it's a 40-foot high bridge, there has to be a bridge that boats can get in and out of the harbor. There's yep. no way you can change that. That's Correct. reality. Yep. And we need the bridge has to be replaced. That's reality. We're fighting as strongly as possible to not take any property. I think Correct. that's the point. That's right. But it's, yeah. There are engineers working on this. I mean, yeah. The engineers do the engineers' work. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, old business. Does anybody has any old business? <laughs> Regina. Um, the rail trail. Ah, that was on my list. <laughs> um, I have talked to several people, including our <laughs> state senator. And everyone is concerned about the rail trail. My concern that I sent an email to the town manager, my concerns, no one else's, is first of all, who are we getting? And maybe things have happened that I wasn't privy to knowing, and I'm not going to go back and watch a meeting <laughs> five years ago. So I think the best way to solve all this is to have everyone, whether they want the rail trail, I mean, I think it's a great project. I'm a bicycle rider. I would love to see Hampton have that. But I do not want to see the taxpayers pay for something that's on state property. Sorry, that's just the way I fly. So I would think the best way to solve all this, and maybe I would like to hear from some of the other towns. I'm not sure. Some towns, it seems like people are telling me in the towns they're totally against it, and then other people in the towns are saying they're totally for it. So perhaps could we host some type of a stakeholder meeting 
in this room with our board and whoever wants to come to it to discuss everyone's pros and cons of doing a rail trail. I agree with that 100%. And I'll I hold like up the analysis for the engineers. We've been given until January 30th to provide a new rail trail designation for the engineering problems that we've identified. Until, if that doesn't happen, then the town won't be able to sign the permit or won't be able to move forward. Good. Now, I, I happen to I think the rail trail is a very valuable asset to the community, provided it's done right. But we've identified some very significant problems. Yep. And what I've been told is we don't know what we're talking about, <laughs> even though federal law governs it. So I, I don't particularly want to get in the middle of this, but that's where I've been assigned, and that's where Public Works has been assigned. If you don't want us to report to you, uh, and we are going to have a meeting next week on it to try to solve the problems and identify the problems, mm. which the state DOT doesn't want to have identified, and they've told <laughs> us so because we've identified it to them. It's ridiculous. And the uh, Regional Planning Commission doesn't want to have it identified either, apparently. <laughs> they think this is ready for signature without further discussion. Well, I you can sign that. that. Well, it better not I be our signatures on there. Right. I, I will tell you, when I was talking to um, Senator Sherman, he said that there are ways that he feels that this could be done without being a burden on the taxpayer. Huh. Maybe we could invite him to our meeting on the 28th. I don't know if he's available. Could we put this on the agenda for the 28th? Sure. It has to be on the agenda for the 28th. Okay, and could we have the opposition here also, I mean, the people that were for I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's the opposition. I know, I people who are for it. Yeah, and I, 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 I don't it. call that a opposition because yeah, yeah. I don't think yeah, any yeah. of us are against it. Right. Yes, we, just we are. I well, totally well, are. Bad, bad, bad choice of words. I'd just like to hear from all sides. I mean, so, if we don't have time for a meeting like Regina said, I'd like to hear from other people Who would also. we like to invite or, or just invite RPC. out on the agenda and yeah, allow yeah. them to come in and speak yeah. if they come to yeah. it? Who? Ooh. I'd rather hear Our, from Hampton people. I know there's Hampton people directly involved with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, then bring them in. And mm -hmm. I will mention it when I get back and uh, report to Senator Sherman of what we talked about tonight. Um, I'll mention that we're going to have the meeting, and if he has time, if maybe he, could he can come. Get or, or have us, somebody come in. Yeah. You know, with his input Okay. also. But Ours. at the same time, I just want to clarify that those were my comments. And I got to tell you, we can't have another 1A. And the way that thing's looking right now, it's another 1A. So hopefully we can address it so it doesn't look like a 1A. That's all I have to say about it. Okay, so we'll have that on the agenda for the 28th. Anything else into old business? We have the vote recommendations of the 2019 Warren Articles. Mr. Chairman, the first article that you have not voted on is article number 12, which is the budget. Okay, wait a second here. The budget committee passed a, well, they had a vote to designate a budget, and then they voted 161 not to recommend a, a budget for the town mm -hmm. as of their last meeting, which was last Thursday. The one public hearing tomorrow night. 161 was the vote. Not to approve it. Not to recommend. So what are we doing? So are well, we the selectmen need to make a recommendation uh, because it's a warrant article and it's a financial article and you have that obligation. So um, basically they're looking at your budget. Mm -hmm. With the exception of what, thirty six, thirty seven thousand dollars With the exception of some mid-30s, yeah, thousand dollars, right. So. Do we have a motion to uh, send the budget forward with We're talking our about Article 12. Correct. Yes, so we, 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 what we, uh, all we need to do is recommend, right? Right. I mean, it's already... It's, it's a vote the, to recommend. All right. Yeah. I'll yeah. make that motion. Motion. Second. Second. Any questions? All those in favor? Three. Opposed? One. Abstained? One. Um, you did Articles 15, 16, and 17, which are the optional tax credit for combat service, 
the veterans optional tax credit and the change veterans service dis, uh, connected disability uh, benefit. Uh, but those were four zero zero. Do you want to change that vote because there are only four of you here at the time you took it? I'll make a motion. We add second it. Now, which one is this? This is articles 15, 15 16, 16, and 17. And 15 is the optional tax credit for combat combat service. Yeah. That's for people who are called up or in the National Guard or the military reserves who own a house in town and they can receive up to a $500 tax credit as long as they're in combat service. While well, they're in combat So service. this is 15, 16, and 17, and I'm the only one that didn't? Right. Okay, I'd like to go with the board on that. The, all three of them? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we'll. And, that, and that was said, the day you weren't here, Rick. Yeah. It just says zero, zero, zero on that. Right. That's why I wasn't yeah. sure. Well, there was a vote, uh, but it was four, zero, zero. It could, oh, just got missed. Just, that's all. Yeah. Okay. I understand that. The only other two warrant articles that are here, and you may or may not wish to vote on them, yep. deal with the smoking ordinance. <laughs> article 50, oh. which is the entire ordinance. Oh, I um, And Article 51, which is an advisory article. They submitted the advisory article first. Uh, it has <laughs> just, that's it. It's just advisory. Uh, the one with the ordinance attached to it is Article 50. Uh, 51, I think, for that action. No, it's Article 50. Oh, good. Yeah. The one with nothing in it was the last article. Oh, okay. So, so what is the pleasure of the board? I'll, I'll move not? to approve both articles. I'll second the motion. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any questions? All right, we, why don't we go one by one? All right. So this is the first one. First one is, is what? Read it, Fred, so you, can, so you don't have to read the whole. It's the actual ordinance, right? It's the actual ordinance, yes. Correct. Sir. Yep. That's correct. So we have a motion and a second to approve the actual ordinance. Is that you know I'm a I'm a hundred can, can we discuss? I'm sorry. Yeah, I just want to make sure that we it's okay, we're doing one at a time. That's so. fine by me. Okay. Yeah. So, so these are zero zero now? Right. No. There are no recommendations on these two at the current. And you don't have to recommend yeah. anything because they don't have any money. Yeah. I'm a hundred percent for for no smoking. Right. But I'm 100% against passing an ordinance that we can't enforce. I agree with them. That's what bothers me tremendously. I mean, 100% against for the no smoking ordinance. But I'm a, I, I can't vote for something that, that we can't enforce. That's my, that's my opinion. And how do we enforce this ordinance? The only way you're going to enforce it was with a police officer because it requires a fine and a penalty. So. Very difficult. Any other questions on this article? That's why you removed this ordinance before. Right. All right. <clears throat> so we have a motion to. Uh, well, let the public decide. Pass. I don't know so that we need to recommend. It's not a money article. You want to? Uh, I think we should just leave it. No, no recommendation. Okay. Yeah, that's good for me. All right. It works fast. Solves a problem. No recommendation on uh, either one. On either one of them. Yeah. So which is? Yeah. I'm fine. That's with that. consensus. Yeah, okay. I'm fine. Okay. I appreciate the effort. And if we can enforce and you're it, done. Then. What about the sidewalk? Yeah. Mace Road. Yeah. Mace Road. Mace Road. You had, I believe, you had already recommended that or did something with it. I Where are we here? Did. Article 49. Article 49. Yeah. Got one page too far here. Article, you're correct. Article 49 was not recommended yet by the board. Right. And I yeah. stand by my The not Municipal Budget Committee voted 0 6 2. Yeah. What was our vote, Fred? And it, it hasn't. We haven't, yeah. haven't, haven't voted on it yet. Okay. Got right. that I move. I move that we not recommend. Do I have a second? Yeah. Yes. Questions, talk, com comments. Comments. Uh, no. I mean, it, oops. Yeah. I was just going to ask what. Uh, where is the one about the um, fund? The fund. What is number is the sidewalk that? fund? Yeah. Uh, we pulled that, I thought. Oh, yeah. No. We didn't? No, you did not pull that. Oh. Um, I thought we did. I was just curious. Article 30. Article 41. 401. 401. So we had right. four. Four. four, four none against. One uh, abstention. One abstention. Right. Yeah. And who's the abstention? I don't remember. I think I. Do you abstain? I abstain. That was, 
Could I say something about games. that sidewalk one, yep. the ADA compliant? I reconsidered my vote to vote with the board. Right. So it was four zero. It, I think it was what? four zero. Did you? Yeah. I thought you. I abstained. I think. For okay. All right. I, yes. I don't. So Rick was here. Rick. No, Rick was here. Okay. Yeah. It was we'll stay. Uh, I think, think Mary I abstained. I did. Yeah. All right. Could so, I speak on that since yes. we're talking about it? I I'm gonna keep my vote with I reconsidered at this board for zero one whatever the vote is, but I want to say the concerns that regardless of what people think are not just coming from one committee in town is that uh, the selectmen having the authority they wish that it was set more up like the capital road improvement fund is where it has to go to town warrant to approve taking the funds out like we do with the road fund so I'm going to leave it in there um, also I'm going to be abstaining from the Mace Road sidewalk warrant article for two reasons one I think that all this stuff needs to be in a plan and presented to the Board of Selectmen see half a million dollars I would love to see it and the reason why I'm going to abstain from it is because I don't want to say no because it's coming from the public and it would cure a problem in a very dangerous part of town that mm -hmm. houses a lot of families and homes and neighborhoods. Drive down that road all the time. There is no I sidewalk. Drive down that yes, road there's all been the time. no sidewalk for the past 50, 60, yep. 70 years, whatever. Yep. But I got to tell you, people drive not the same that they did 40, 50, 60, 70 years ago, and there's a lot more of them driving around here. So I think that the Board of Selectmen, yes. the town, the public need to know that sidewalks are very important. But just because, you know, we all decided we want sidewalks right now, well, now we're asking the voters for $600,000 in sidewalks. This is why these things fail, because there's no plan. Yes. So like I said, I want the, there was a lot of uh, participation in that Warren article last year. I was very happy to see those people get involved and I am enthused by it and I want to encourage it but at the same time everyone needs to know that things like this they have to be part of a in plan. the plan somewhere have to be you know part of a plan. they have to be I, part I of a plan I couldn't agree with you more so I believe public works made you. the comment that they would be placing it in the five-year capital expense or six-year capital expenditures plan sometime in the next two years okay mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm gonna vote against it I'm hundred percent it needs to be in a plan yeah. And but I'm going to vote against it because it just not that not now they have to put in a plan. Right. And that's yeah. what I'm going to do too. I would like to abstain um, in spirit, but we need to vote how right. we feel. Absolutely, Mary Louise. I've owned my property on Little River Road for the past 45 years. I raised four children there. There are no sidewalks, but my oldest daughter was hit by a car when she was riding her bike. So. I'm not excited about sidewalks there. So we have a motion not to, recom uh, not to recommend this warrant article? Well, I'll we also move to not recommend. Second. Yeah. All, is, all is in favor? Four. Opposed? And I feel like one. that we're, vote, we're already voting when we vote to uh, establish the yeah. fund. Correct. It can't be and I, I, I think we all uh, vote against what we, we all agree feel. on that. So are there any others? Yep. Repeal false alarm fees. You remember oh. we had investigated the, we have, we in the ordinance we have fees for false alarms for fire and police alarms. Mm -hmm. It turns out that those are criminal violations of law, not civil yeah. violations. So we really do we can't do anything about it. We turn those over to the police department. Yeah. They investigate. If charges need to be yeah. levied, they, they levy them and take the person to court. We have it as a civil violation, which has yeah. no authority. So yeah. you need a motion. I to move to not recommend. No, you make a motion to recommend. So make a motion to recommend. Oh, recommend. Remove I'm it sorry. You're so right. we can remove yeah, it from the ordinance. Yeah, so we can get ordinance. it out. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. Seconded by Jim. All those in favor? Excellent. Unanimous. Good. That's it. Are we all, that's all the all ones I got. <laughs> no, we sure. Yeah. Well, that's what <laughs> she had in her list. So okay. I just went through and double checked them again. New business. Is there any new business to come before the board? Seeing none, closing comments. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if you would, I'd appreciate if the board would move to go into a non-public session under RSA 91 hyphen capital A colon three <laughs> Roman two small e 
uh, litigation. So move, Mr. Chairman. I need a, a second. A roll call. Aye. 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 Thank you very much, Channel 22. Max, this is thank just you. for your information.